think we are I think we are all set up and good to go. You want to do the intro today, Gazi, or should I? Who's running the uh, intro today? I can do it for once in yeah. a while. Wait, which yeah. episode is this? How many have we done? This is episode, uh... Fuck, how many episodes is this, Gazi? I lost, <laughs> I lost track of what is... Uh, let's just say nine. I don't know. Let's just throw out a number. I, it's whatever <laughs> episode it is. I'll figure it out. Um... Hey everybody, welcome to Tavern Talk episode we don't even know. Um, before 10 at least, and it's not the first one, so somewhere between 1 and 9, I guess. And uh, this is a very casual lean back podcast where we basically just have one topic. In this type of time, we're going to talk a lot about the Path of Exile, but the topic is ARPGs, and we'll just see where the conversation goes. And with me is my co-host Darth Microtransaction, and we've invited Talkative Try to talk about, well, we don't know yet. We'll see where it goes. Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Doing good. How is doing well today? Welcome. Thanks for coming on the podcast Hi. today, Talkative. Yeah, of course. I've watched however many episodes that you guys have thrown out here between one and nine, like you said, and I've always enjoyed them. So I'm really glad to be on here talking about probably Necropolis League, which has been quite a dramatic league so far for everybody involved. Uh, yeah, I, especially for yeah. my death count. It's um, It's a lot. I, I can't really, like, I'm a big crafter kind of guy. I thought yeah. I would, would love the crafty aspect of it, but I hate it. But I love everything else. Really? You don't like the crafting? Even the, so there's a bunch of new options that came in, like, two days ago where you can fracture influenced mods now. That doesn't, like, make you all, ooh, excited? Not even no. close. I, no, I, I, like, I, like the, I like the difficulty of crafting really big items. Okay. And how... Because of how difficult it is, it makes me feel very good to do those things. Because it's a lot of work behind it. I just don't like the part of a lot of work behind it to be, let me click this corpse there, let me click that corpse there, right. and you go through a grid of like 5 million corpses and set that up for 5 days and then click it once and pray it goes well. It's like, eh. And it's basically deterministic because you can just stack 2,500% chance to get a mod and you're basically going to get it. So it's not really... Yeah, I mean, it's like um, old school harvest uh, with extra steps is uh, is what a uh, guy in chat said earlier. Uh, I would okay. more say that it's harvest with a load of extra steps. Mm, okay. That's my point. But no, I mean, I don't mind it. I don't engage with it too much, but everything else, I, I like it quite a lot. I've but DM, it. what are you taking on the craft? I've liked it a lot. So in You're the beginning, too, like first few days, I kind of didn't like the league. Like I was playing through the campaign. I was thinking hardcore solo self found. So I'm desperately trying to get void stones and that. That's my kind of long-term goal here. And I've mitigated to trade here to play with Pox. But I was going through it, and the best item I've ever had, it came from the crafting. So I had a good experience with it because it rode like triple resistance, like life, hybrid life type thing. So it was just, it was like a perfect, you know, big pog type of moment. I do agree that the the how to say it the quality of life could maybe feel a little better but i actually i don't have a lot of complaints the first few days i didn't really like the league because i was going through the campaign and it felt brutal and all that um with the with the unavoidable modifiers but after they kind of changed the modifiers a little bit ever since the update i've actually been liking it a lot and then i had the juiciest map i've had which was it dropped like a hundred chaos orbs in in one map because of the whole like these guys would drop currency items and it was just the rolling yeah. little tumbleweed looking chaos orbs which felt great so i don't know i actually am quite enjoying the league to be honest and it's uh i always struggle getting five links in solo self found because i'm you know i'm not blasting through tier 17 right i'm just trying to play the game and i can do the plus one socket plus one socket minimum four minimum four then you can get the minimum five and you can get a five link like pretty easy and we are we were able to craft an axe with like 30% quality, you know, no problem. So like there's a lot of stuff for it feels like me, which is I'm not really like I'm not blasting or anything. I'm just playing the game like fairly low level. And there's a lot of things I can get out of it just almost for free without having to like engage with the mechanic too much. That's fair. I missed the first part there because I apparently had you mute for some reason. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> um I don't know. I feel like that what you're saying you didn't like being forced into the league mechanic that's yeah. one of the things i like the most i feel like if you don't want to engage with the league mechanic go play standard that's always been my take i want the league to make me play the actual league 
being able to skip it makes me just feel, you know, what's the point? You don't agree with that? I don't know if it's like I don't agree. It's just I'm a different type of player. Like, I can see a world in which a player exists that wants to play the game with his buddy. Like, look at me. Me and me and Pox is a good example of this, okay? I was playing the last couple of days. Pox is obviously a better player than myself. We're both playing, like, the hardcore trade, and we could be doing softcore or something if we really wanted, sure. But we are trying the hardcore trade, and there's no way around the modifiers. So if I was, like, a brand new player, like, completely brand new, and it was already harder, there's no opt-out for that, and you could say, we'll go play standard, but what if I wanted to play the trade league with the fresh economy and everything else minus the map modifiers? I do like the crafting. There's things I like engaging with. This is only the part of the league I didn't like was that I was not able to skip that. But then they nerfed it a bit, and it doesn't seem as bad. I, I don't really feel like when I'm dying, it's because of the modifiers anymore. But at the start, like, that was the world that I could see existed. I, I didn't like being forced into the, the modifiers within the campaign specifically uh, was a part that bothered me a little bit. But it, it didn't ruin the game or anything for me. How about I you find that also magnified because you play hardcore, right? Yeah. And for people who are playing non-meta builds, I think a lot of these modifiers can totally ruin their days. Me, for example, I am, I'd consider myself a pretty casual player. I didn't follow any meta build and I'm in trade league and I'm doing no farming strategies. I'm just throwing in all the random new scarabs, having a blast. But some of those mods, they ruined my day. So I really at all think it's all about your perspective as a player. A lot of people like, who have loud opinions, like on Reddit and everything, they plan out their maps for 30 minutes before they play them. And then they go in and if they get a crap modifier on the map, they will blow up, right? Because they're going to have a terrible time, a terrible experience. So I, I'm, I'm against you guys. I do think in all leagues prior, I think up until, I think it was bestiary, you could skip league mechanics. You know, last league, the league before. I'm just curious why they had such a swap on this. It's a very different take on the league style that they've had, you know, where you can't, you literally can't skip it. You have to engage with it. At least the difficulty, uh, the rewards, the Necropolis uh, crafting. I honestly haven't engaged much with it because my build is like almost all uniques, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, I've done stuff with the All Flames, which are super cool. I actually really like that mechanic, and I think that that should replace like Tormented Spirits or maybe be attached to them in some way. That'd be super cool. But I'm, I'm a big fan of stuff like Forbidden Sanctum and Tota and everything, where if you want to go all in on a League mechanic, you can. Or you can choose mm -hmm. to ignore it and play with the Economic Reset, which I think is another big factor. In a league reset, even though the economy of this league, I'm sure we'll talk about it later, has been completely dumpstered. <laughs> uh, but it's it's not always just the league mechanic, you know? Uh, yeah, that's, that, that's yeah. kind of... Did you want to go, guys, so you can... Not go, go. I was going to say, that's kind of how like I feel about it. Like, I'm not really... I can see why the people that are kind of juicing at the top are going to get affected a yeah. lot more than me. You know, as someone who's... I'm not really going to be participating in, like, super juice anything at this moment i'm just trying to get get through the bosses at this point so uh being able to avoid it was something that made me kind of like path of exile specifically one of the things i loved about the game when i was getting into it was that they had like these little game modes where i could do like blight right so it's like i got like a little tower defense mode which apparently you know everyone likes so like you're saying forbidden sanctum etc and it was almost the mini game aspect of it that it made me feel like there's a really good base arpg and then i can choose to cut out what portion of it I happen to like, and I don't have to be good at the whole game. I just yeah. have to be good at the part I like, which is what made me fall in love with the game. And so when they change the base game a little bit, where it's like, okay, well, the base game is fundamentally different. It's like, well, I just want to like have my niche. Like I want to, I like the tower defense. I like this. But when they, you changing the base game on me, it's like, it makes it harder for someone like me to get into the game even more so because the game's hard enough like it is, is the way I feel about it. Like, I don't really need the game to be harder. Uh, and I do want to participate in the league because I see this even with single-player games. Like, I'd play a single-player game. My buddy would play a single-player game. These games will never interact with each other, but we're playing at the same time, and that's part of it. That's part of the energy of it. So I feel like the, the answer of, like, go play standard is, like, technically a correct one. Like, where it's like, yeah, you're right. I could get that experience. You're 100% you're right. I could get that experience that I'm looking for without it. There, but then there's the side of it where it's like, but I want to participate in the thing. Everyone's doing this thing, and I want to participate in that thing. If you know what I'm, where I'm going with this. No, I, I just feel like 
the new the the new next new thing is is introduced and it's like you have the option to just completely ignore it i just feel like there's no sense there's no point in in this new next thing being mm. there but on the other hand they've also started introducing for the first time um possibility to double down on the next new thing through your atlas tree right there's necropolis stuff inside the atlas tree would you say that a, a reasonable solution would then be for us to be able to block the new league mechanic because that to me sounds so crazy as well to turn it off like you can with all the other opt-in mechanics mm -hmm. like i'm okay you with know, it that too ah dang it there's no good solution here um i don't know if that would be a good solution i feel like just being able to if you open up the when you open like up the map device or an area or something having perhaps a mechanic or a currency, they love their currencies, to remove one of the modifiers entirely. I think that'd be kind of cool if it was common, you know? Add another mm. all flame ember in there that disregards this, you know, chaos damage as extra, or, uh, extra chaos on top of fizz, stuff like that, that destroys some builds that don't have any chaos resistance yet on them. Stuff like that, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, but they decided not to do that, obviously, unless you want to put frogs on your map. But I sell all my frogs, so. <laughs> yeah, like all I'm saying is, like they could they could give players that option if people really didn't want. I just feel like, and maybe it's because I played the game for so many years that I that I'm in a position where there's a mm. new thing. I'd like to engage with the thing that is new. What's yeah. the point of playing if it's not going to be the new stuff, right? But there it's, are people that might not so want to, feeling... and they might be over too. The feeling of you wanting to engage with the thing that is new is what I'm experiencing with the entirety of the game right now. So it's like that feeling of like, I like this, it's new, it's something different. I have that yet to uncover with like 80% of the game. You see, I'm like, there's a huge chunk of stuff that I've yet to interact with. So it's it's that the, the mandatoriness makes it where you can't discover the part I want. I can only discover the part that they're forcing me to with the leak. Which again, I'm okay with because I feel like the changes have made it good enough where it's like it doesn't really bother me anymore. But in the beginning, this conversation originally started with the at the start of the league, like this was how I felt, which they have nerfed it to a point where it feels fine. Yeah. Like I don't really feel like I have a problem with the league anymore. At the beginning, I kind of wasn't enjoying it for these reasons. But mm. now it's like, well, the it seems fine to me. Like I don't really have a an issue. They nerfed it enough. I'm curious on that front too. I think we're all pretty different players here. I see some people in the chat saying I'm super casual. I'm, I mean, I'm not crazy casual. I don't juice my maps or anything. Like I'm just getting to my first T17 right now. DM, where are you? Like you've restarted. I say you're of way hardcore. farther than I am. I yeah, mean, yeah, I, yeah. I've died five times this season. Right now, where am I? At? I'm on the beach, brother. I got to kill a zombie and get my first skill gem again. That's back where I am. So Good it's Lord. you know I'm. We're playing a different a battle here. But the the. the I don't like those conversations anyway, because it's like, it's a video game. The point is just to have fun. If you're having more fun yeah. than me, you're beating me. Like, that's literally the point of it. It doesn't have to do with how far yeah. we are. So yeah. I, I'm not much of a gatekeeper Andy in that aspect. I just... But it is rather that. interesting that you bring that up, though, because it's like, I, I'm I'm what people would call one of the one percenters with the way I, I play, I guess. But the way I play is what you were talking about, DM. I've been shifting so hard to make sure that I just focus on play whatever is fun. I play Spectres. They're far from meta. I had so much fun. I played this as yeah. a start. I had so much fun. Now I changed to Holy Relic, which, good Lord, it needs to get nerfed. Holy Christ. Um, like, it's beyond insane. Uh, but map-wise, I, I haven't used anything this league whatsoever. All of my currency I make every league for the past 10 years have been profit crafting. And let's not go too much into the market today. <laughs> I am not happy. <laughs> not happy. Uh, but it, like, I'm not much further than you guys in terms of progression either. I, yeah, yeah, sure. I've done a handful of tier 17s. So I find I like I feel like they're kind of crazy and over tuned, but the changes to them were better and stuff like that. But in terms of juicing, the fact that I make all my currency profit crafting allows me to do whatever I like. So I've spent days where hey, I just want a boss today. I could do that. Whether or not I profit from it, I don't care because I get my currency from my currency. And if I want a map, I'll just do maps. Like, oh, I just want to throw in some some scares for fun. I do that. 
Like I don't really have exactly any, do. any yeah. uh, juicing strategy. So I, I'm not one of those people that smacks up, you know, the 30 divine map and then go in and pray I drop a couple of mirrors, you know. <laughs> I've seen some people do that. <laughs> you know? I mean, those videos were insane. I, did you guys watch any of the videos of the I've seen some. I, so 30 I've, divine maps? So last night, I was watching, I'm going to mispronounce his name because I'm doing it off the top of my head. I think it was Fubin or... Is it, of Gun? Fub, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I always butcher these names. But it's, Maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't <laughs> actually know how to pronounce it. But he was he was popping off. like, like it was, He was killing so much shit, the whole screen was lagging. And it was like, I was looking at that, and it's like, man, we're playing a different game. Like, we're playing yep. literally an yeah. entirely different... It's it, it. I just want to kill the bosses. Like, I'm just trying to get my Void Stones. I got a tier 16 map down on Hardcore Solo Cell Phone. I was feeling great. I hit level 92, farthest I've been. And I died, and now I'm messing around with trade. So my goal is, I just want to get the Void Stones, get the boss. Like, I'm so far away from, like, this currency thing. Like, I don't I do not do that at all. I tried Magic Fine for, like, you know, a couple hours last week, and it was boring as shit. So it's like, that's why it's... Uh, the the part of the community which is like oh this part is the best part or I'm farther because it. it's like it uh, we're doing completely different thing I have like my own goal which is do this thing and I look at the currency farming and all this is like that I'm glad you're having fun I'm glad you guys enjoy that that I will I will probably never do that like that's just something that does not at all look remotely enjoyable to me like. It, in, it'd be like I'm not been a big RuneScape PKer guy. I never really. You know, I, I like the, the sixty attack peers. Those are fun, but like the the full main PK and stuff, it's not for me. I'll never do it. Play the game twenty years, still won't do it. I think that's kind of like the whole currency part. So the whole juicing of the maps and the magic fight and the tier seventeen strats, like I don't understand and probably never will. It's just not for me. I mean, it's like you said. I think the important part is that a lot of people, not just in Path of Exile, just in games in general they forget that you're playing a game and the very definition of playing a game and when spending your time in there or reinvesting or wasting whatever you want to describe it as is to have fun you want to disconnect mm -hmm. from reality and have a good time if doing the magic fine stuff juicing your maps getting, getting giga currency that way is you having fun go for it i don't think that's fun i don't like farming for currency i don't like being locked into currency being something i have to work towards <laughs> To, uh, I make my currency work for me, and then I will solely engage with the stuffs in the gameplay that I find enjoyable, and I love that approach. Which means I don't rarely—it's not very often that I use maps, and that's fun. Like that—that's how I play, and everyone plays differently. Like the way I play is different from you guys, and we then Fubgun is playing very differently from us, you know. So it's—I uh, don't know—it's just uh, something that people forget a lot. You see yeah. that that mentality on Reddit a lot. Yeah, that's something that I've been pushing trying to push a lot on my channel is just envy is the thief of joy. Like everybody is constantly mm -hmm. comparing themselves to everyone else in, especially in Path of Exile and these massive currency farming strats or this divine fishing strat that was nerfed and all these people missed out and oh my gosh, I hate the game because I didn't chill. If that's the only way you think you're gonna have fun playing the game, maybe you just need to maybe reorient yourself set a new personal goal, realize like you said, Gazi, realize it's just a game. Just focus on having fun. And if you're not having fun, unless you're doing these broken strategies, uh, I don't know what to say. Kind Truly. A, kind of a mark of a good game to have all these different ways that people oh, yeah. are enjoying it, though. Like, when I look and I see this, oh, yeah. like, I don't even understand what's going on, but this dude's doing that, or I look at Gazi and he's got the crazy minion build. Like, the fact that there's so many different styles that people are playing and the different leagues, hardcore, hardcore solo cell phone, yeah. softcore solo cell phone, hardcore trade, like all of these different styles, it's, it makes me realize, I mean, you really got a, you got quite a good game if so many different types of players can all enjoy the same game at the same time. That's one of the things that makes it so good. Yeah. Limited like build stuffs, right? Like they, like I mentioned earlier, I've been playing Spectres a lot and it's far from meta. I mean, it does the end game content, but it's not meta. It's fun to play. I have had a blast. That's something yeah. you can't do in other ARPGs because there's going to be like a, a meta that everyone goes with, you know, but hopefully that will change for season four. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I mean, it's just always going to be the case, right? So I, I also, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. Let me cut you off. You can go. I wanted to ask him a question. No, I just, uh, just wanted to finish saying like the, um, I think that's, that's the perspective a certain the vocal people have right the verbal people that you see talking about these things 
And a lot of people also seem to be missing out on the fact that the majority of the player base are the silent casual majority. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I can't speak for them, but I would assume that they don't play the meta <laughs> all the time, you know? Melee skills all the way, man. Yes. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that. So what I wanted to ask is, did I see it correctly that you're playing Volcanic Snaking? That's what I'm doing. Volcanic Fissure of Snaking. Hell yes. Didn't, didn't take anyone else's build. I searched for it on YouTube before the leak started, and there was a Ruthless build for it. <laughs> and that was it. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, but of course, it's scaling up is super slow. So I'm doing strength stacking for it. I'm going to swap to like chaos damage and replica Albrons if I can ever get enough divines to buy it. It's like going up in price by the day. It's very unfortunate, but it is so much fun. Uh, it requires a good PC, though, I'd say, because when you hit once, your fissure snakes like three times and you want to uh, stack attack speed. So I'm doing like tons of attacks per second and I've got all these fissures just going all over the place. It's super fun, though. I really like it. That was the move that I really wanted to try. So last week, I yeah. pulled one of those on Hardcore, and I got a character to Katava and then died to, like, Act 10 Katava with it. And I was like, man, this could have been the character that called him Insect Slammer, made him look like Ragnaros. And I was like, this is, like, the coolest fucking build of all time. So when I saw your play, I was like, hell yeah, someone's, like, out there doing volcanic snaking. Because like you're saying, there's not a lot of dudes they're <laughs> playing oh. the volcanic snaking I mean, but it's the coolest move ever like it auto aims everyone down I it's really actually like really it. cool yeah the transfigured gems are so cool like i never would have thought when they originally re released volcanic fissure like with the projectiles and stuff that something like this would come into the game but i i like it and it's auto targeting too so you know you can hit something once from across the room and it will snake all the way onto the other side so in some cases it can be pseudo ranged too a little safer at end game kind of like cleave of rage last league that's what i scaled all the way to level 100 and that was basically a ranged scale but i could still call myself a melee player that was super oh. fun <laughs> So. Isn't that like the name of the game for every melee build in the entire game? It's kind of ranged. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning Strike, Frost Blades. Yeah, that's like my list of builds. I mean, Bone Shatter to an extent, right? You know, when I you're like clearing. Bone Shatter. So. Bone Shatter just feels good to play. Like there's something about yeah. the, the Leap Slam two-handed axe style that every time I play something different, it's like, man, I just miss the, I miss the Juggernaut Leap Slam two-handed axe. That's... Easily no. my favorite my favorite play style in the game. But, you know, speaking of Volcano, what it reminds me of, you're going to love this segue, is the Druid's Volcano in Path of Exile 2, which is something that mm. all of us actually here have had a chance to play. But I didn't get a chance to talk to you and get your take on how you liked Path of Exile 2. Yeah, I had a very different experience to many people because I'm not a great player. Uh I've only played like Guild Wars 2, Path of Exile, and a few other little games here and there. When I went to LA to play Path of Exile 2, I got my ass kicked by almost every single boss. I was on the yeah. Devourer, I shit you not, for 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan walked by and he was laughing at me because he's like, I, th I thought you are going to be better than this, man. <laughs> but oh, it was no. tough. Uh, I was getting wrecked by all these bosses. I've never played like Elden Ring or anything. So when I was going into those rooms, those epic fights, I, I did not know what I was getting into. I loved it. It was very difficult, though. And I did not get nearly as far as many other people. I was basically a gaming journalist um, oh, no. while, while there. So, but I loved it. I, uh, I like the gameplay. I do like that it's slowed down and it's focused on the bosses because I'm kind of like UDM. That's what I really enjoy doing, um, fighting bosses. And it's so cool that every area has one of those to look forward to, unlike in Path of Exile 1, where, you know, you need to get to the end of an act to fight a big boss, or you need to build up the fragments at end game to fight one. Sounds like in that game, about a third of your time is going to be fighting these cool bosses, which is super exciting, in addition to all the other things that they have added. So I'm just super excited about it, as probably Class. a lot of people in the chat know who have watched my channel. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of PoE2 content for sure. What, what class did you end up playing? I played the warrior, so I was okay. melee. I wanted to get some melee footage. I played the uh, sorcerer, but I do have a little funny story to add to this whole not be well being destroyed by the bosses. So after the event, must have been in the evening, or sitting down with the boys and uh, preach, preach gaming. He tells us how he was sitting next to 
what I could only assume is an employee of IGN, but it was a gaming journalist um, who got to... Uh, which boss was it? it? It was one of the bosses, at least. The Devourer, my yeah, it was the Devourer, I think. Yeah. And he just kept wiping for like half an hour straight. And he didn't like want to tell him, give him some tips. Like first we looked over, and apparently the dude was just bad. Like he did just bad. <laughs> and he just, you know, went like this all the time with his hands, like, oh fuck this, you know. And then left to get some food. Came back 40 minutes later, tried again, wiped for another half hour or something, and then left the building. <laughs> like actually left. To be fair, though, like I, I kind of like the like, devourer was actually kind of hard, though. I mean, like to be kind of fair, I know, I know that you know, I know that's the it, it it's it's funny, but like it, it actually kind of was hard. It like, was. It, it wasn't the easiest boss in the world. I felt like I was no, tracking I more with the devourer than like shaper. I swear. Yeah, yeah. Like legitimately, Seriously. I was, I was, because I died four times. The first time I fought, you know, it's like I, I died for sure against him. I was kind of like, wow, this guy's like a little bit of bullshit. But I think if you rush straight there on the quest and don't do any gear or anything, like if you have the beach gear and you run straight to the worm, like you're going to get, you're going to get your ass waxed for sure. Like it's not exactly the easiest fight in the world, at least in the beginning. The poison will actually one shot you. So if he pops up and you take any of the poison, you will get one shot. That's true. But then again, I mean, I, we talked about this uh, after Priest told us this, and it's like, that is a side boss. You don't even have to do it. But the game didn't tell you that it didn't have to. Every time you wipe, you spawn at the checkpoint right outside the boss. So the game is mm -hmm. telling you, you are in the right place. You are supposed to kill this one, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. There, I think there's some uh, improvements they could make. But the fact that the guy left and didn't come back is just so funny to me. <laughs> IRL rage quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, oh, yeah. man. But I really enjoyed the game. And another aspect that I think, I don't know if a lot of people talked about it, the tutorials that were in. Did you guys see those that were voiced by one of the GGG employees? They were much uh, it better. literally explains the skill, yeah, how yeah. to upgrade it with support gems. I think that's going to be invaluable for new players who cannot comprehend how to move around their gear pieces and gems and everything. So yeah. when, I'm pretty when, excited about that. When you could see the visuals of it and then with the warrior, some of the later ones, they didn't have it in place yet. And I immediately found myself like, oh shit. Like I actually wanted to see, you know what I mean? Like I got used yeah. to it immediately. So later on when the ones weren't done yet, I was like, oh, I kind of missed like this little preview of the skill that they had for the POE too. So I already found myself leaning on that for sure. Although the animation times were still, I'm, I'm always going to come back to this. The animation times are so long. I'm wondering if they're going to make attack speed like a really important thing or something later. Because I don't know how you're supposed to do a 2.32 second cast. The animation times for the Ranger and the Sorceress seemed okay. I think the Sorceress had one skill that was kind of tough. Right, Gazzy? That's what you played? Was it like the Ice Nova one? Well, well, um, Here we go. <laughs> so you, the best way to do damage with a sorcerer was to put a flame wall it. and uh, spark. Okay. But if you did that, you died because you had to mm. be on top of the boss. So the best way to do single target damage was to, uh, well, yeah, uh, you brought out your wand and you started slapping it with your default attack. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so I'm yeah. not sure if there's any skill I want to talk about <laughs> right now. <laughs> It felt good, though. I'll tell you that. It, it mm -hmm. didn't feel bad. It was just balance issues right. um, in general. Man, I was also... Like, I played a, a, a very popular build. I think a lot of people did uh, at the event. I call it the, the well finder. So you port back to town to click on the well all the time and then go back in. So there was a lot of that that I, didn't, that I wasn't very happy with. But there was a lot of good things as well. But that that was pretty annoying. And then watching everyone playing the, uh, the ranger... <laughs> Comparing to my stuff, I was Magnus. like, I play in the wrong class. Where's my witch? I want to play minions. Get me out of this. I I wasn't smart enough to start up the wind up for my warrior attacks before I went into the packs. So I'd like run up to a pack and I'd start the wind up and I'd just get mobbed and just die in the open areas over and over.
I didn't learn. It's such a different mindset because in Path of Exile 1, I just run straight at the pack and start attacking. I needed to be strategic and I was not being strategic. I, I had too much on my mind. <laughs> Some of the bosses yeah. were like bugged against totems. So like the, the end of the act one boss, the Iron Wolf guy, like if you put the totem up, he would just run into the totem. And then apparently there's supposed to be like a whole nother like scene where he does great. Cause I looked at other people's footage later. I'm like, he didn't even, I didn't even proc this event. There's supposed to be like this huge gray, like mist that he like jumps out of, you know, and does that. Yeah. Never happened what? for me. Cause he gets, he get hit by the totem and then he'd be like, Oh, the totem's fucking me up, bro. And like sit there and then I could just like hit him over and over again. And he'd be like run away and then try to charge me again. And like, I put the totem back up and then be like, Oh, he get hit again and he just went he wouldn't be able to do anything it was it was great and then he gets stun locked because of the stupid two-handed mace was completely busted with the stun locking so I, it felt pretty good they're gonna, they're gonna fix that for sure i bet <laughs> yeah i mean there, there was definitely a lot of things to be fixed um they know did it. you um did you guys get to try out the higher level playthroughs they had an exocon and a couple of other events around the world before no, the, no. the LA event. That was my only one. So the first time I got to try the Sorcerer was at Exocon. And we had, I think it was level 30 or 40. And this whole mentality, like you were talking about DM with PE one mentality. I had AOE skills with CC. I'm going to run around, group up a bunch of boys and free some and nuke them. You ran around, you grouped them up, and then you were dead. <laughs> like, you could not get surrounded for more than half a second. It's absolutely crazy. So I think like the gameplay is so different. It's like they took like the best things from Diablo 4 and then did their thing with it. That that's how mm -hmm. it like I think the graphic looks better as well. Like that's the kind of how PUE2 plays right now. Where it's like a mix of the best things from from Diablo 4 and some inspirations from Elden Ring. That's kind of like the mix I see when I play when I play PUE2 so far. And I, I'm not yeah. opposed to it. Now Diablo 4. I'd love I know you both have played it extensively. I could not get past level 70. It was too much of a bore. I've tried three times now and I'm I'm on the fence trying it again in season 4. Could you guys like pitch it to me because I've been watching all the videos on it. I listen to the dev talks and they seem like they're they're cognizant of the problems and they're trying to solve them. Will I like if I didn't like the gameplay before, will I like it now? I, or my you want to go or should i did, did you play the ptr gazi very little yes but i got the feedback and videos from it oh then you go the guys yeah, you do your take and then I'll, I'll follow up um so essentially my my take is very simple they they have very talented people in their team and they're very smart individuals and i don't think anyone would go to work thinking i'm gonna make the worst game ever I think there are other problems causing issues in terms of getting certain things fixed. The PTR has to me sh has shown to me that it's not just looking like a promising step in the right direction. It's looking more like a huge, gigantic leap in the right direction. And they've already a lot of small steps before that is already covered in the PTR. Now, there's obviously a lot of bugs and issues that it wasn't a big fa fan of, but the gameplay loop to me felt way better better progression and whatnot my only concern once they have fixed the bugs and issues around it is that it's still very it's a very very fast progression which uh, halts or prevents the longevity of my enjoyment from it but i don't mind my enjoyment being short as long as the time i do spend in there is very enjoyable and i think that's mm -hmm. what's going to happen in season four from what i've seen yeah so they okay. I, I feel like they moved a lot of the the gameplay um, in terms of time perspective to like the master working system. Like it's mm -hmm. very much like a Lost Ark type system where you level it and the percentage yeah. successful goes down, et cetera. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be farming like the pits to get the materials, to do attempts to try to level up your gear and master work the gear. And you're also going to be trying to farm like greater affix drops. So I think that they pushed out. It is faster progression in terms of experience, but I feel like they pushed out the itemization portion of it further out. So it's going to take you longer to get what would essentially be in-game gear. Because now that you have to chase greater affixes, you're going to have to trace multiple procs of the greater affixes, and then you're going to have to masterwork it. And then if you're really min-maxing, you're going to try the masterwork on the right one, et cetera, for multiple hits. And so if you are chasing that portion, it 
it's going to take a while, I think, to actually mm. get the gear you really want. Now, to answer your question, talkative, because you said like I got bored at seventy, I couldn't really play it. I don't, I don't necessarily see. And while I agree with Gazi, it is significantly better. I think it's significantly better. It's just my take on it. I don't mm -hmm. think the people that didn't like it at all, like if you were so bored, you never even got to one hundred, or you didn't like any yeah. of the seed. Like if you didn't like it at all. I don't see how suddenly the items being different are going to make you like it because you still have to do the thing you didn't like in order to get the items, which is the killing the monsters and killing the bosses and farming the levels. You still have to do those things. And you're still going to be doing damage numbers that are somewhat similar until you get to the end game with the masterwork. So it's like the, the same part of the game in which you got bored with is not changed at all. Like going to 1 to 70 is going to be faster but you're either doing a campaign or skipping it and then going and doing Helltide. You might like the Helltide density better, but if yeah. you got bored just leveling, I don't know how I'm going to be able to talk you into like not being bored leveling again. They, I didn't feel like there was anything, any pinnacle achievements. Like I think we're on the same page. We both like killing the bosses in PoE. I know with the pit, now there's like level 200 versions of all these other bosses. They all seemed so easy when I went up against them. Like I, I one shot all of them. I've never done that in PoE. I've failed, like, I think I failed, like, five shapers before I ever cleared shaper or anything on softcore trade. In D4, that never happened. Okay, okay. I could not kill Uber Lilith, of course. Didn't get to her. Uh, yeah, but I watched lots of those fights. All the other fights seemed pretty darn easy. Is that going to change up with the pit and the new scaling of the bosses, or do you not think so? I mean, I think that your power level is going to continue to progress high enough that by the time you get to the other bosses it's somewhat similar experience mm. now you can watch like woody and rob's videos for instance of them playing against the higher level dudes and you're gonna see they're doing a bazillion goddamn damage you know against these bosses they're not one-shotting it anymore which is better like you want yes. woody's got a real good video where you can watch him on rogue sitting there slowly killing the uber and dario and it looks like a decent boss fight but i mean if you're gonna try to make me compare it against like shaper like we're not these aren't the same level of bosses, right? You know, but I don't. I really don't think that D four is going to basically ever get to the state where it's you, you're going to have, you know, Shaper, Surus, Maven. Like you're not going to have these level of boss fights. These are like fundamentally phenomenal boss fight designs. And I, I, mm. I think Diablo is more about like the mindless grind of getting there. I don't really think it's about like you beat this one boss and it's like, you did it. I mean, that's what their Lilith yeah. is. I think that's what they want that to be. Like, if you get Lilith yeah. down, you're proud. But that's like, I, that is their pinnacle. And I think the rest of it is about how many times you're going to farm these bosses. And they want the itemization to be the chase. Because it's easier to make you chase the items than it is to make you chase the bosses. Because boss design's hard. Right. And it's... it you know, eventually it's either you be there or you don't. And like, they're going to run out of content that way. So I think they first have to get the items right, which is what they did. And I don't know if it's 100% right, but it's better. And then they can probably add in game on after that. Cause you can't really make the end game, then change the items, which reworks the entire balance of the game. And then like, they have to do this part first. So maybe eventually yeah. it's going to be what you're asking for. But for you particularly, it sounds like you want achievements and I did this and yeah. I beat this boss and I got this pen. Like that's not in the game yet. Like there's the Ubers, right. you can kill the Ubers, mm. which are better and they're harder, but like what you seem to be describing, I don't know if that's there for you. Yeah, yeah, no, that totally makes sense to take. And that's that's what I try to encourage for other people to do too, like set personal goals. Like in Path of Exile, my personal goal is always like 40 out of 40 challenges. I like that set of challenges. I go for that. That's what I shoot for almost every single league. In D4, I, I just don't feel like there's any sort of system like that in place. Um, even if there was, it just doesn't entice me right now. Maybe later, though. I will try it eventually again. The 200 bosses are the closest we've seen to that so far. Now yeah, you have the yeah. Uber bosses. You can save up, do the Uber Uber variant. That's about that's about as good as we got so far. So maybe you maybe you play the try that and see if you like it. If not, then meh. That's kind yeah, of like, I remember bashing my head into a brick wall playing Summoner before all the buffs, like the, the Season Zero to be the first player to kill Uber Lilith as a summoner. And after 20 hours, I, I didn't win. I got second place. <laughs> 20 hours, bashing my head into it. And then the next season straight? is like, yeah, almost. Oh. Um, 
It, it was... It, I had chat giving me gold so I could afford my repair bills at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it took me 11 hours to beat Lilith oh with, a, with a build that's good against it. Like, it took me 11 hours yeah. for the first time. And, you know, and afterwards, everyone just one-shot it. But uh, I don't know. It's yeah. like... I agree with the um, on on the, on the takes. I like the problem that Yellow Four has had from the very start are two major things. One is that the game is not what it should have been on launch, which they're trying to get to first. That's the first problem. It's there basically. And um, the other one is the, something I I voiced my concern about when during beta. The, the, the TLDR the story of that is that they. There was a sequence in beta, which was us playing level 25 characters for a weekend. People said, minions are too strong. And they were like, oh, we, we're listening to the community. Here, let's nerf minions without us, without ever touching and testing of it whatsoever. And then the next beta weekend came up. They're like, oh, minions are so bad. They die to everything. Just looking at them the wrong way. And, and they're like getting trashed for it. Reddit was on fire. Well, it's always on fire. And then they, they said, we're listening to the community. And they buffed them again. They're like... This is scary. That means that they are literally changing things in the game without uh, testing it. They're like, oh, the community wants this, so we're just throwing out a random number from our prison pockets and hope it's going to land. And that's been consistent ever since the game was launched. Every time they make changes, most of them feels like they're just coming up with a random number and say, we have made changes, <laughs> you know, instead of actually having playtested changes. And the PTR is a... Is a a clear description of uh, uh, proof of that to me that a lot of the things in there uh that needs fixing is not them spending dev time and money on having people test it they are using the player base to test for them and then they're gonna listen to what they say and the adjustments to those things which i hope will be in the patch notes are going to be based on a magical random number that they come up with based on comments from the community and that's scary that's my biggest problems with d4 right now I'm not sure if you agree, DM, on that. Uh, I see two ways with it. It's I don't think that what you're describing is necessarily there either. Like, were there having somebody behind the scenes, like a you know, like we have with GGG, for instance, it just has like a very clear cut vision to the point of like I don't need other people's info. Here's what it's going to be. I know what's going. Like that's not really seem to be there. They are changing based upon feedback. I don't know if I'm mad at them changing based upon feedback because I think I would rather have the feedback of the community be listened to at this point because I don't necessarily believe without the feedback the game would get better I, or else they would have been able to release it in a better state, right? So I think they actually need the feedback um, because they do need the help is the way I see it. You need people like Rax up there like testing it for 14 hours a yeah. day. They're going to write 18 pages and send it to them. Like that will make the game better. And we asked for a PTR and we got a PTR. So I'm not really like gonna flame them for taking the feedback. Um, I yeah. think what we could say is inspired leadership seems to be something that I have seen come up with these conversations over and over again, where it's like, there's not really a clear, there doesn't seem to be a clear cut like person that has the, the identity of what Diablo should be. It's an open world that then is instanced most of the time. It was supposed to be, you know, like an MMO style, but then trading wasn't there at launch. So it's like you see kind of this, like what is actually the point of this game? It seems to mm -hmm. be like a common conversational piece I see, right? And there's some truth to that. Um, but at this point, it's like take the feedback, build it off the feedback. You know, I know it's maybe not as fast as, as we all want, but it's like, I would rather them listen to the feedback than not, because obviously when they yeah. didn't listen to feedback, the, it, the game wasn't good. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm kind of mixed about it. Like, I don't really, I wish that I could be like, oh shit, well, you, what you guys were planning is way better than I would have ever thought. And, you know, I wish that was the case, but it's not. So it's like, okay, well, maybe they do actually need the PTR and the feedback from people and... I'm okay with it because without it, I mean, the game ain't going to change, I don't think. Huge, huge question for you both. So would either of you ever support like a PTR for Path of Exile after the they events of this a... league and last league? They do run into the alpha. But, but that's an alpha though, right? It's a very small user set from what I understand. And it's not, yeah. it's not with a lot of publicity around it, of course.
And I think they do that, what, because they don't want the mystery of the league launch to be spoiled, right? They want a lot of hype around it. They have a lot of people playing that first week. Then there's the drop-off. If there was a PTR for PoE, do you think that would completely drum all that down? Or do you think they'd get a lot of the issues out and then have a far more consistent user base if there's not a whole bunch of game-breaking, economy-breaking things that pop into the game? I don't think I'm educated enough to answer that question. I mean, yeah. like, I think I'm still learning the game itself. I definitely yeah. don't want... like I. What I with with GGG, I feel like I don't want to influence their decision making. That's how I feel about. It. I just want to enjoy the game. I think they're doing the right things, or else I wouldn't be here playing their game. I trust yeah. them and the people that played the game long enough. Like I, I, it's one of the only games I've played where it's like, you know what? Just don't listen to me at all. Like I'm just I'm just gonna play it. <laughs> like maybe I have my own little complaints that I'll talk about or whatever every now and then. But it's like I I'm good. Like I'm just gonna play whatever I'm offered because I feel good about it. Whereas opposed to, would PTR be cool? I don't know. I actually don't know. I have no idea. I'm not educated enough about Path of Exile to know if we need a PTR, if, whether it would ruin, et cetera. So I would listen to somebody else on that one. I feel like like the whole idea with a assigned leader vision, mm -hmm. you have this fully painted uh, image in front of you and their changes they're making is taking steps to getting that. You know, Bob Ross comes out and paints happy little trees on it. And... Um, I think that that exists in PoE, like we talked about, and having feedback in terms of, hey, make these changes from a very small set of players is one thing. But I think like the purpose of the alpha PTR is bug fixing, you know, uh, finding issues or balance problems, yeah. whatnot. And I know that they've had issues in the past. The prime example of that was uh, which year it now was uh, when Absolution was introduced. It was reported by alpha testers uh that uh hey this needs to get buffed and it didn't happen it got released it got awful stats and it was just terrible and then not long after they buffed it by 429 percent more damage <laughs> that's like a d4 patch <laughs> i was like what the hell happened here so i'm not sure exactly how they want to run it but they do have very talented people doing alpha testing for them mm -hmm. but they, we also have to keep in mind that we are we we PUE players are extremely spoiled. We get a new yeah. league every thirty, well, more like four months. Hopefully, they'll be on three month schedule nowadays. Um, three to four months, we get a new league. It's consistent. It's it's big. Look at the Alba Force a uh, couple of first seasons, and compare that big company and what those seasons are providing compared to what we get in PUE in terms of content. It's just massive, in my opinion. I think it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I don't know if the the public test realm, uh, I know for a fact that a lot of us content creators would not want to participate. Obviously, one part of it would be being first to engage with something. It's it's nice, surprising, good clips and all those, good entertainment yeah. and whatnot. I don't mind that part too much. It's more about the um, um, the idea of that allows you to to create content before everyone else kind of thing. And that kind of approach where being first matters more than being right. That mentality is something we've seen a lot in Diablo 4 content creation, uh, especially with builds. Mm -hmm. And by content creators not being able to make content out of the test realm is is very helpful. And I think it's good for the community not to have a plethora of videos out where the entire game is figured out before it's launched kind of thing. Right. That makes sense and I, I appreciate that a lot yeah and in, i mean in path of exile what we're seeing here right this league is there's just there's so many interlocking systems it's it's ridiculous the sheer amount of content and how it all can pump together to to turn into something wild it's it's just insane like with the giga juicing strategy with the rogue exiles and the ghost it and the ghosts and then beyond and there's like twenty five thousand monsters in a map I don't think anybody ever thought that was possible. And I'm sure there's all this other stuff that's popping up throughout this league, especially with the scarabs that they introduced, because they introduced so many different possibilities in PoE on top of the Atlas tree, of which you can now have three of at a time. I mean, the number of scenarios now are just crazy. What do you guys think about that? I know, DM, you've ripped again. But the three Atlas trees this league have been amazing for me as someone who likes to pop between certain types of content I love. And they're so easily accessible. Yeah, I didn't really get to engage with it yet because uh, 
I was doing the hardcore solo self out like boss thing. And um, I will say from last week, one of my complaints was the Atlas tree. I, f I felt like I, I was getting really locked. Like I wanted to originally, like I'm gonna farm essences and then I'm gonna do it. So like the things that I was particularly targeting, I was getting frustrated because I couldn't, I couldn't change it up. Like I want to do expedition, but then I want to do harvest. Like, so I feel like the Atlas yeah. tree for the solo cell phone is like super nice is what comes to my mind immediately. Cause now it's like, okay, well I can farm harvest and then I can swip and do my expedition or whatever. So I, I think that that is probably one of my more favorite changes, even if I haven't got to interact with it yet. Like it's, it's definitely, it's definitely something where it's like, that's, that's fucking nice. And I was surprised when I saw it got the hiccup. Sorry. I was surprised I when I saw it in the trailer. Yeah, I, I, as someone who doesn't play like an absolute ton, I get to try so many more things now too. Because before I'd have to like unspec out of something by getting tons of orbs on of unmaking, and then I'd have to redo my tree, and yeah. if I wanted to change yeah. it again, well, probably going to happen next league. Now I have three different variations that I can hop between, and if I want to make a little alteration there, it's just like 20 orbs, and that's totally fine. It's, it's really nice. I'm interacting with systems I never have before. So I've got like a Maven tree, an Exarch, and Harvest tree. It's it's very fun. I like stuff that lets me experiment. I feel like one of the things yeah. that feels discouraging for me when I'm like trying to learn the game and do these new builds is I feel very de-incentivized to try new things. It's like, try this one thing and get really good at this one thing. Like that seems to be the line of Path of Exile is focus down. How many people are only playing one build for like 10 years? You know what I mean? It's just like, this is the thing I do. And so when I play games... I come from MMOs and one of my favorite things about MMOs was there's this big world and I can engage with mm -hmm. most of it. Like I, you know, I don't necessarily want to be like the best at one thing. I want to like, let me go, you know, do farming today. Let me do wood cutting. I'm going to do a slayer task, whatever. Like I, I like the, the ability to engage with the entirety of the world as I see fit, when I see fit. But the Atlas tree did make me feel like I was very niche down. So having that it seems like it opens up the ability, like this is going to be my test tree or something. Like it makes me feel like I get to learn more of the game without it being as punishing. I, I like me who don't really do juiced map strategies. I I jump from one thing to another all the time, and I never cared about the skill tree for it. Normally, I would set up a a skill tree that is very generic, uh, mm -hmm. bosses or map grinding. And then I would just have that and then I'll just do whatever I want and feel good about it and not really care. But now, now I can be like, yo, I want to try out the Necropolis double da downing on that. Or I want to do map farming for tier 17. It's like I can literally actually engage with, like you said, uh, try as well. Like you actually engage with mechanics that you normally wouldn't have done uh, uh, otherwise. And I, I don't have problems with unmaking. Uh, right now I have got 300 of them. It's using them that's the problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so much time and effort but with free yeah. templates i'm good you know so no i i very much enjoy it i think it's good um it also weaves back to the idea like they've given us the finger all right is the community going to ask for the hand now or the entire arm is why not have the you know the possibility of free respects or different respect templates now that we have this to allow for experimentation you know, it's just never going to end. So I think they need to be very careful not to provide too much of it because then it's going to be too much on that end, right? But I'm, I'm happy with what we have right now, personally, for sure. I saw someone in the chat say multiple skill trees per character. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. There we go. It's already started. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. It sounds pretty good, boys. <laughs> it sounds like I, I could try out a bunch of different builds without having to redo another character. If know. it was as easy as selecting the Atlas tree, I'd just select, oh, this is my bossing skill. Okay, I'm going to do that. Let's go. Oh, man. Sounds oh, that's too to much. Me. That's too tempting. Oh, damn. I uh, I have played three different builds this league, and uh, that's all done on one character that's been completely respect all three times. Really? So I uh, just today started a new character, and that's going to be my fourth build. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Volcanic fissure all the way. <laughs> uh, not fun. No, no, <laughs> not not even close. <laughs> I am using a, an attack skill, and I'm using a sword. Oh, actually, what, what skill? What smite? What? No, I'm using um, lancing steel of spraying, and I'm using a capricious spirit blade. 
Ooh. Might as well Two be speaking Holy Greek Relic. to me. I know one of those things. Yeah, DM. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool, guys. Yeah, that, sound, oh, that sounds great, Keller. Go get them. With your, yeah. what did you say, lancing, spitting, steel of the spraying or something? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Explain the bill. Uh... What is it? <laughs> Well, uh, lancing steel is uh, one of the steel skills with uh, that puts the blades on, um, and um, basically it lingers the spraying uh, version. It, you shoot it once, it still shoots some projectiles after you start moving. So that with returning projectiles allows you to have consistent projectiles even if you're dodging abilities. And as long as I'm hitting something, that's gonna trigger the ability for my minions. That's actually doing all the damage. Uh, and um, oh, this yeah. is that crazy it's... build you showed me on <laughs> stream course. the other day, right? Where you're just like Gatling canning down, it's bouncing back and forth, and you can barely see the screen. That's that's that build, right? Yeah, I I think it is. It might be us. Otherwise, it's the Spectre build you saw where you couldn't see anything. Okay, that might that sounds. <laughs> Wait, were the projectiles white? Yes, yes. That's a Spectre build. Okay. Um, this one is uh they need to nerf it it is so overtuned it's it's ridiculous basically the holy the holy relic used to trigger a, a nova right on top of itself when you hit something so people played cyclone with it so they would spin around and the, these relics they stay close to you so you spin around inside a pack of enemies with cyclone hitting so many times and then this nova would then trigger based of its cooldown and do a ton of damage and it has the highest base damage of all minions in the entire game but the the um uh, this uh, transfiguration gem that we have now of conviction removes the healing component of it, but makes it act like an astral projector, which allows the novas to not trigger from the minion, but rather where the hit happens. So you can use a range oh, attack shit. such as Lancing Steel, and these minions will just trigger these nova attacks on distance. And it's just ridiculous how insane the damage is. So we're just running around shooting Lancing Steels on the screen, and everything just dies. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, I have how go for it. Ah, uh, go on. I was gonna say, how much would it take to get you to play a different skill, like a melee skill, Gazzy? Would never. you ever consider it, or just not fun? You you, you wouldn't do it. I have played quite a few melee skills. Now, normally, I prefer in order of my liking would be minion spell based, and then wonders. And I play all three quite a lot. I guides for all three as well. It's very fun. Yeah. Um, then it would be melee. And then it would be Gucci Hobo default attacks. <laughs> and then it would be playing anything else. And then it would be actually touching grass. Then we get to bow skills oh, the, in okay. that order. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I played Damn. Dominating Blow. Well, that's a melee skill. True, true. <laughs> I tried to make that work a long time ago. That was tough. A long time ago? That's How long have you been playing Path of Exile? Uh, since Blight. I played. I started playing the day before the first ExileCon, so I, oh, I was shit. playing D three, and I got to Asmodan, and I didn't like the cinematic style where he like haunts you and says like, "Hey, I'm gonna go and do <laughs> this and all these terrible things," and I was just like, "Oh man, this is this is kind of cheesy. I'm gonna try something else out." So I literally searched Google games like Diablo and PUE popped up. Oh shit! And I just downloaded it that night, and I logged on the next morning. And uh, on the big homepage, it was like, Path of Exile 2 announced. And I was like, what the hell? What's going on? It's getting a sequel. And uh, down the rabbit hole I went. Uh, so, yeah, it's been a good this ride. Sounds like a fun experience. I got, I got tricked into playing this game. Oh, really? Ten years, ten years ago, yeah. I was playing Diablo 3. I was complaining to a friend how minions were so bad there's only witch doctor i do i was fuming it's always I, minions it. why is it always minions uh, with you guy it always yeah. comes back to the minion andy <laughs> i mean i was playing diablo 3 and i was like i wish this was diablo 2 minions this is what i said and i started and i went off on our minion rant and my friend was like man you should try path of exile they have minions and they work they're functional they they, they feel great the only the only problem was that minions back then were so bad in path of exile it was terrible <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> god awful, but you know the, the they felt better. So you know, like, like you said, down the rabbit hole I went, and yeah, so I said, hold my rum, I'll make these work one way or another. <laughs> and here we are, ten years later. <laughs> when did you start? So you started playing what in 2014? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sacrifice yeah, so of the Vol came out not long after I started. Oh, that's, okay. That's yeah. Patch. Okay. Yeah. So that's early on. Yeah, the next yeah. patch uh, I started playing in Blight, and then Cirrus came out, 
or Sirius, however you want to say it, came out the league after, uh, and I cleared him. Man, so much has changed since then. I remember when Sirius used to come into your maps and die beam you randomly. Oh, yeah. Oh, DM, you would have loved that. Oh, that, my God. That doesn't sound like I would love that, brother. Oh, that my God. Brutal. It was random, too. So you used to know when you would have certain types of influence in your maps because it was a whole crazy Atlas system. So you'd have like the Crusader influence and Hunter and Redeemer and everything. And then randomly you'd get Cirrus influence. It would literally be you're just mapping, chilling, normal map. Wow. You don't expect anything. And then you'd hear die and the Cirrus music would come on and a beam would fly away. Oh, it was. Wait, it was, was it as juiced as the normal Cirrus die beam? Like with it, with it one shot you? It one shot well, me. It had, it, was, it had all the modifiers from the map, the map. that was affecting it as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if you think, if you think like hearing the touch of God, a random shaper illusion is smacking oh. your butt in a tier 17 oh. is crazy. That's nothing compared to the serious possessed monsters yeah. we had back yeah. then. <laughs> and <It's> awful. <laughs> And when you when it terrible. first came out, you juggled the Cirrus storms during the fight. No. So I don't know if that's still a mechanic in Uber Cirrus, but you had to like manage the storms. You could control. It was actually kind of better because you could control whether or not Cirrus was in the storm. But during the fight, you had to manage them too to make sure that they weren't coming at you and everything. It was very fun. I liked it. It was terrible. People hated it. Yeah, you. Oh. <laughs> I love Cirrus. But I dislike the Shaper Elder Rings more. Was no, not around for that. That oh was in, that looked insane. Oh my god! It took me. It took so many hours just to set it up. You had to like mm. the Atlas had all the maps around. And you did maps to spawn the influence, and he was like having his area surrounding certain maps on the Atlas. And then you wanted to make his area a circle around the entire field, and then that one map that can like a little box map that you wanted to do. You did that one, which would remove the influence, and then you just get the influence back again. You just... That was so painful. I'm so happy about, that's not part of the game. Uh, was it 64 watchstone times? How about that? Mm. Let's get that. Let's give that back. Yeah. Sounds yeah, like yeah. I missed all the really juicy stuff. Oh, oh God. You, you, uh, you came in in a very good time. Like The game has really taken yeah. massive steps to not only mm -hmm. make the game more receptible for new and newer players, but most importantly, way more enjoyable to engage with. It doesn't yeah. take you, it, it doesn't have these unnecessary difficulties to juice your maps. And that's also one of the things that I like a lot with this extant removal. <clears throat> if I want to play Harvests, or sorry, the Harbingers, I'll just back in some Scarabs and I am done. I'm now playing Harvest or Harbingers, even sorry. And same thing with the Atlas Tree. I love these changes because they, they're very straightforward. You understand them. You don't have to go through universe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through PoE school. I mean, I remember when I graduated, we were like 500 people in class. And then five years later, there was like three people that graduated with me. That's insane. Like PoE school is just too, too hard back then. <laughs> it uh, it, oh my it God. seems like every league I saw, so I've played Toda, Affliction, and now this one, or Necropolis. And every league I played, people didn't like it to start. Like no one, no one liked Toto when it launched. People were complaining about the about the league mechanic, and the affliction at the start. Everyone was complaining about the Wildwood being overtuned, and now Necropolis, myself included, didn't like the start of it. So it's like, is this is? And then all of them got fixed basically. So is that something that happened all the way back when you guys were playing too? Like the start of the league, every time was like Bruto, and then they would they would nerf it or yep. something. They they would rather introduce things too hard and tone yeah. it down because that's a good change rather yep. than introducing it too easy and then you making can't, it hard. You can't do that. That would be a true dumpster fire. If stuff was too easy and then they buffed it back up in the first week of a league, it would be insane. The, the pushback would be crazy. It's like um, what happened with the D4 patch where they gutted everyone, everyone right, by like 50%. Yeah. It didn't go well. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. But, uh, this league, I, I think it, more so than in leagues past, there have been more people complaining about, I don't want to say exploits because I don't think they're exploits, but the, the strategies that have been nerfed because they're unintended strategies. There's a lot of people complaining about FOMO, essentially. In leagues past, like uh, Lake of Calandra, I don't think you played that one, DM. No, I started in Toto. That, you started in Toto, right. 
So that one, there was a lot of outcry because of this new loot system that was implemented to do with rares, where essentially you could get like loot goblins and people found a way to like read chart or they claimed that they found a way to like read poe and find out which mods would be in which map so they could just insert a map and see when there was going to be a divine burst uh of currency in the map itself and oh my gosh it was just an absolute firestorm on reddit i think that was the last time that the developers interacted with us on reddit i think that's the last post from chris wilson was the Lake of Calandra debacle. And never again. It's been like a year yeah. and a half now, which is so uh, yeah. sad, in my opinion. 319. 319. Uh, yeah, 319 Lake of Calandra and 315 Expedition were the two most disastrous league launches uh, in PUE history. You didn't like Expedition? I mean, people hated Expedition. No, no, I, didn't. I did the Expedition. I didn't mind the lead mechanic. It's just yeah. the changes that, were, that came with the, those, those two specific patches and arch the nemesis was the one with 19 and it's like they've been disasters generally uh, yeah. and considered disasters in the community as well but it's, it's like i i remember the flask changes like dm came in you you came in and you have been engaging with flasks and flasks is part of your gear progression and it feels yep. really good in in the past they were like Eh, they're there. Nothing. It's like whatever. But the first steps to these some of the changes, like they have this fully painted image, and now they're doing steps uh, to make changes to get to that paint picture. The problem they had was when they made changes that only came with half of the stuff needed to get to the picture, mm -hmm. and when they like when they nerfed something, but the counteract uh, changed together with that was that supposed to solve or finalize that entire. Uh, mechanical change did not come at the same time. I believe that was 15. I might be wrong, actually. That was, uh, I think that was 3.15. I think you're right. Yeah. So they created this disastrous move. And then once they finally got the, the counterweight added to it, the entire change made perfect sense. It was just the best thing ever. It's just that, that that first step was a downward step instead of having everything in baked into one change and being a positive change. Which it yeah. ultimately was, because Flasks are fantastic now. Yeah. I, like... I think the only positive League launch I remember is Ritual. And that's when I think Maven was added to the game. I think everybody was very pleased about the state of it then. Maven and that is... still looked back as very fond. You know, great League. Maven has got to be one of the coolest is i think shaper still my favorite boss fight in like almost any game at this point like right up there with like ridley from super metro like it's very top tier but the the maven boss fight has got to be the one when i opened up a dare for the first time i was like oh holy shit like there's there's a lot going on here oh yeah you know it feels fair it feels like the most fair fight out of out of basically all of them is what it feels like okay if you do this right you can I guess basically never get hit. Though there's the RNG with like what minions it spawns, right? Mm. I think the last phase is uh, a perfect example of that with the beams that you got to do pinpoint movements through for the memory game. If you don't have the DPS to just insta phaser, oh my gosh, I sweat every time I fight Maven. Every single league I end up like super sweaty, my hands are shaking. I, that's why I love Path of Exile. It's so much fun. I find that so much. <laughs> I know, I know that Bob sweats like a crazy, like it's insane. Like you see it dripping from him as he's running because that beam prevents the energy shield and life regeneration mm -hmm. and it affects minions. And the only the yeah. most common way to keep your enemy growing alive is life regeneration. So he gets touched by a beam and then eats a fireball, he's gone. Yeah, that's just so crazy. But, um, I know I like Maven a lot. I think the, I think the memory game is fun to engage with. It's way more fun than falling half asleep between the faces of Cirrus. Uh, right. You just get to the edge. Of, right. you Fuck Cirrus, bro. That like Uber oh, Cirrus was the lamest, oh. the lamest goddamn thing, dude. I I have never raged so hard in my life as when I walked back into the arena and I flame dashed in after dying. I immediately flame dashed into a fucking storm that's like right at the entrance of the door. It's like why? Like what am I even supposed to learn? <laughs> Oh, uh, the God. storms were way worse before, but um, I like Uber Cirrus is the only Uber endgame pinnacle boss 
that I will only do if I have X amount of DPS. So I can surg down the last phase to not care about it. Because it's just too much happening in that. So you either need... Well, either either you need to be bred in a test tube like Ben, or <laughs> you need to... Uh, you have Giga Defenses, or you need Giga DPS. Or if you have the currency both. Like, there is, there is no in-between where you can have an all-right build and manage it unless you're you're some sort of demigod like it's uh, just it took so me messy. like 10 or 15 tries or something crazy dude to, to finally yep. get them down it took it took a lot of a lot of trying to get them down finally but the the part that i like the best is where he warps you into or he does the the line of walls and he does like the kamehameha and you can either like go left <laughs> right left right left right till you get behind him or teleport you know through it like, I like that, and I like the whole, like, meteorite slam on the maze. Like, there's some really cool mechanics. I just hate the giant mm -hmm. dot storm bullshit. Like, I've never been so mad. It's just <laughs> randomly, like, walking into the storm and getting insta-gibbed. See, for me, it's the degens on Uber Serious. They don't disappear. So if you're playing a melee build, those degens stay persistent throughout the fight. In the normal fight, they disappear. After a few seconds, it's totally fine. But at, by the end of the fight, if you don't have Giga DPS, like Gazzy said, the entire arena is covered. And you need to move perfectly. It's like the entire arena is essentially like those Maven beams. Because if you touch one, I feel like you're just done. It's rough. It's really rough. It's pretty rough. Yeah. I, I did it on Ark, so I didn't have to deal with it with Melee, but Melee would have been even worse. Yeah. One of the reasons I love Sirius, too, is... Uh, I used to do, when I first started making PoE videos, it was lore videos. Shout mm -hmm. out to Kate and Cat Noodle. She's great. Uh, and I just deeply enjoyed the whole story of Sirius. And unfortunately, a lot of it is gone from the game since it's not the end game story. But if you guys are interested in the end game lore, man, it is, it's pretty damn good. Isn't uh, he supposed to be like that. us or something? Like, yeah, basically? yeah. The Conquerors are us, you know, going in, endlessly grinding, getting all the gear, becoming uber powerful, and then going insane. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, I have a lore question. I have played Path of Exile for over 10 years, and I still don't know why Piety has to die 50 times. Kill me, Eddie. You got, a, you, got a uh, you got a short description, so I will finally, after 10 years of this game, know why we're killing her five times, or 50, I, or whatever it is. I think they just like the voice actor. I think that's it. Uh, but they also missed a prime opportunity. Why is Abomination the trio? It should be Piety, man. Oh my gosh, it should be Piety. Maybe they're saving that for like a new another map, another tier 17, like a Piety Malachi, Uber, Uber Piety, Piety fight. Yeah, she's coming. Uber Piety. I mean, didn't Mark say he wanted to do Uber Dominus? So I feel like that's a shoe in for the next uh, next T17 map. Be good. Who's your favorite uh, like voice acted character in the in the whole game? NPCs, anything? Like, who's your straight up favorite? Okay, well, the first person who came to mind is Einhar, but that's like such oh, a, God. of course, answer. Mm. I, I, I mean, Einhar, and then I really like Cirrus. I repeat his lines to my wife, much to her chagrin. She, she doesn't like that. The voice so. actor for Einhar was at the first ExileCon. Yeah, he was doing and the hype up. In full, yeah, in full outfit. Yeah. So I, I met him backstage, and I was like, yeah, this I get. I never met a voice actor before, so I was like, I wanted to talk to him, like have a conversation about yeah. it because I, I liked him. The dude never broke character. Man, we were backstage in the makeup. <laughs> Could you like cut? Just just shut up and talk to me like a human being. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, you got net sex oil? I'm like, come on, man, talk to me. That's based. It was impossible. <laughs> That's, That's so good. Oh, How about you guys? Man. What, what, oh. what, what do you guys like to listen to a, over and over? Easy, easy. Not a cockroach is like the best line in the whole thing. Not a cockroach. Really? I fucking love yeah. that. Like that, that every time I get to that character, it's like, oh, I love it. I love this character. Lady like, Diala. She, okay. She's, she's nice. easily my favorite. And then it's uh, Izaro. I mean, you can't, you know, his, his lines are the most like, like they're unique too. Like it's not like yeah. he's just saying some line we all know. Like the whole emperor lines and everything, you know, like uh, the throne is the lone, was it being an emperor is the loneliest throne or whatever. It's like those type of lines, like, holy shit, these are like actually really well written and oh, yeah. well performed. Like it's both yeah. of it. Like they're very good. And then obviously I'm, Cassia. Yeah. I'm going to miss him in Path of Exile too. 
Man, yeah. I hope a lot of these characters show up in Pee Wee too. They, they, oh. they need to. They they need to. They he's too good of lines to like mm -hmm. not have in there somewhere. Yeah. Maybe Gazzy, how about you? I'm curious. Time and tide waits for no man. No, not her. It's, it's such a classic. <laughs> it's either that or. You know? your, your mic went out when you said that. I, have I no just idea heard you screeching. Said. I was like, "Is this one of the birds?" That's or how it's called. The pot scream and kill me. Oh, kill me! Oh, okay, yeah. Kill me! Yeah, it's a classic. And the best part is probably the little sound she makes when she gets completely penetrated by that oh. big, long, girthy spear Here from uh, from him. That and, and then oh, you no. know, irrelevant. Like that, those, yeah. are, those are pretty Very good. good. Those are those are pretty good. It's hard not to like shapers. Oh, I you're gonna love this, the DM. I mean, I'm a person who absolutely loathed the idea of light, but <laughs> Cassia singing when you're not in range is always hilarious to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. When you're not, you're close enough to hear her, but not for her to react that you're there. That singing is, I don't know, I just, I just feel good when I hear it. <laughs> okay. Then I see that it's blight and I remember that it's shit and I don't want to do it. But Man, it's weird that, <laughs> it's weird how many people didn't like blight. Well, that was the one thing I didn't get when I was starting to play the game. It was like, blight is so fucking good. Like, I was just like, this is like one of the coolest things I'd seen almost in the game. And then immediately everyone's like, you're a freak. What the hell is wrong with you? And then like people on Reddit are talking about how I'm a blight enjoyer and shit. It's like, what is wrong with blight? Why am I the one that thinks this is so fucking cool? And then everyone else is like, this is the most dog shit mode. <laughs> like everyone hates it, but it's like loot boxes, bro. It looks like my little icon for my for my channel. And you just open up these little loot boxes and you get drops. I absolutely love it. It was fun at first. It's just, I don't know. I think it's because I love TD games. I have always loved it. And when it was pitched, I was like, yes, this is going to be so cool. And I see it. I'm like, there's no point in making towers. I'm just going to sit there, go get a drink while some minions kill everything. I don't have to care. This is not what I wanted. I think that's the disappointment of the lead mechanic not being what I wanted is, is the biggest issue I have with it. Is it I know because other you have minions the same, that, it may, that it makes the league mechanic not work for you? Or do you just fundamentally not like the way they did the towers? No matter what build I play, I never bother making towers because it's not needed. You just serve it down. Yeah, I mean... I that seems bad. crazy to me. That sounds like so, that you seems too. like a like a like a zero point zero zero one percent of player problem. You can you can do Maybe. like the fully juiced maps with no towers. Yes. Yeah, that's insane. What? Oh what, my god! What, would you? Why would you? I have crap builds. I'm, I'm terrible. <laughs> okay, I mean, so so my my point there. I mean, you talk about the Uber Blights, right? Yeah. Like those. The the reason I would go into them. Th those type of content is if I feel like my character is ready and maybe it is an elitist take on it, but I've only engaged with Uber Blight very uh, leaks ago, several leaks ago. So I'm not sure at all how it is right now, but you got to keep in mind, like there, like Ethan game report, he literally makes minion AFK blight builds with the purpose of you opening it up, then focus on whatever, you know, non-gaming related hobby you have or work to five minutes later, go back to your computer to loot because your minions killed everything you were That's AFK. awesome though. I mean, isn't that awesome? Like there's You're no other- play in the game. Yeah, but there's no other game mode that can do that. Like, do you need like a third version of some fucking crafting dog shit? Like this, it's it's unique. You get a, <laughs> you get something that you don't have anywhere. You should be excited that it's your thing for minions. You can AFK and, and go do whatever. Well, there's AFK games like idle heroes, clicker, things put up a mouse macro and play clicker thingy on the web browser yeah i, I don't know play cookie clicker is awesome simulator all right plant the seed in real life and wait for it that's the same amount of enjoyment that would get <laughs> oh, I mean, what's man. the point i don't oh man i i don't know that's all awesome. for me i'm just sitting there thinking like oh that's great okay i can't play poe right now but my build can do it for me so then you go play fucking i don't know runescape or whatever
and then you wait on your tree to cut anyway. You could do like 15 of these games. All right. All right. I can sit there and do YouTube videos that I could, uh, I could play. I play Tibia. Uh, you play RuneScape. I play Tibia. There you go. So I do that every now and then off stream. What do I do? I sit in my hideout like a good little boy and wait for trades to happen. Yeah. And I make 100 events in evening. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather do that than, than sit AFK in the map. I mean, they, I want to play the game. That's why I like minions. All right. They're interactive, right? Fair enough. Jesus. Fair enough. All right, I uh, yeah I I, I can't take it away from you, but I I can't listen to someone uh, insult my beautiful blight mode like this. Uh, uh, Cassie is too based. Now I, when I realized that the that it's not as good of currency as I thought, because I remember when I was playing at the first league, I go through and I'd open up the crate, I'm like, holy shit, that's like four chaos. Oh, that one's like three of chaos. I'd be like excited by literally every crate I'm opening, and then later on it's like I'd see a video and someone's get like fifty divines in one map, and I'm like, oh. I guess I just yeah. I, I mean the bad. market. Oh, the market, so terrible. Do you want and to touch they... on it briefly? I think, can you? I don't know. I mean, a lot of angry people out there. Let's Definitely. just put it this way: I I am extremely upset with the market, uh, mm. and that's also one of the reasons that I I'm not pushing too much currency this league because I'm like, mm. I I just can't be ours too. It's just what is what is going on. I think the problem is. The there is a mechanic that's in the game that's making people mirror today, and then they're like, "Yo, this is too 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 much." They have to nerf it. They nerf it. That's good. They nerfed it. The problem now is that the people that are not degens playing every day, like like you know some of us streamers should do, and we now end up in a position where we got to engage with that and make profit and benefit from that, yeah. and the people that are more casual did not. Now that's causing a big problem for them. That's problem number one. Then they do they did it again for that matter with the unique. So people bought headhunters to base plus for like a fraction of what they normally go for, and the patch came in and suddenly they skyrocketed more than twice the price again. Absolutely crazy. Now I don't mind that because I like the market to stabilize again. The problem with this is Chris Wilson made a statement some years ago with the importance. Uh, where he was at a podcast with another YouTuber. Or uh, they, they were talking. Right, Hayes. Yes. Uh, yep. I believe it was right, and they talked about the new world comparison, how important it was to have a, like the integrity of the economy had a higher priority than st server stability, and I I think we all can agree with that and praise that decision, and then we see what happens with this league. I feel like if a mistake has been made to allow a certain approach to the market to behave in one way, the only solution would be to just let it let it take its uh, take its course right that's where i'm sitting at. and i didn't i wouldn't like that either but i think that would be the best because now the casual players don't feel cheated on and the funny thing with that as well to top it off is there to, to add a final note on it is that casual players or these type of players would only complain about that being a problem but they don't see the issue that the one percent blasters goes through and that is hitting maps in a couple of hours of a league launch and realizing Sure, this is kind of over two. I just ripped two characters, whereas that casual guy is only in Act 3. And that happens. We engage with those things and go through the bad things as well that gets fixed before before they get to engage with them. So when they get up there, they're like, oh, this is fixed. This is good. But that's because the other guys got to go through the big, bad things. So it goes both ways, right? But in the end, people that play as much as you know the veterans are doing or the DJs or call the creators, I don't feel like the game should cater to us at all. I think it should be more towards the, the casual players and robbing them out of these things makes them feel bad. And that's not good. That, that's basically where I'm sitting at in this discussion. I, I think I agree with most of your take. And there was a big problem with this league, especially wherein the strategy where people were getting 10 mirrors per day was not available on league launch. It was because a post league patch that was supposed to address all the complaints people were having too. So they made a snap decision probably not a lot of thought probably went into I'm I'm sure some thought went into it, and they, it was the best intentions. But they added those crazy modifiers onto T17s and made them re-rollable, right? And then they added new Anarchy All Flames to the game. Like, all this stuff was post-league launch, probably to address all the complaints people were having about it being a super unrewarding league. And the game feeling bad because the only way you could really get anything was through crafting and the new grave mechanic, right? So... It's a combination of factors. Like, I, I totally agree with you. I think my initial take was that, yeah, totally nerf it. But as I've come to think about it a lot more, you're right. It's probably causing more instability in the economy. 
because now all the people who abused it have essentially hoarded all the wealth in the game and have it just hiking in price, especially like all the headhunters and mage bloods and all that stuff that they had. And it's just like me pricing me out of the stuff that I really wanted to get, like the replica Elberon's Warpath. It was like seven divines when I was like, oh man, I'm one divine away. And I went to bed and it's like 15 divines now. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I'm never going to get that. Oh my God. Like, so. I bought a mage bud because of the prices because they, they kept making changes like this that had affected the market. Yeah. So when that happened, my first instinct was, I'm just going to buy as many mage buds as I can because it's, it's, things are going to change and this is going to go up again. I did. I tried to get a hot under, couldn't afford it. Then the patch came in and I doubled my money. It's like, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. It's just stupid. Yeah. That's yeah. how I feel. I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm pessimistic about it. I just don't like yeah. when when changes are made that heavily impacts the market. Like veteran players, we can adjust. That's not a problem. We can make our currency. That's not a problem. But the, the issue is for the casual players who now feel robbed for not being able to engage with these. And now they don't have anything. Whilst the guys who did engage with it has everything. That's that's the perspective a lot of people will have. I, don't Again, know. I can't speak for them, though. I don't know how you defeat this issue in any game, though. Like, first mover's advantage is not only a problem in games, mm. but in real life. And I don't feel mm. like this is a solvable problem. Like, how do I tell you, you spend 20 hours, let's say, a day playing the game, but then the guy who spends three hours a day should have the same rewards? No, he shouldn't. Like, I don't, I don't understand how you would be able to solve this issue. It's either, okay, let's say there's a major bleeding out in the economy. Do we either fix it? and potentially screw over the guy that didn't play as much and the guy who's been playing more gets rewarded. I mean, that's like, you you literally planned for it. You literally bought it ahead of time and planned for it, right? So it's like, aren't you kind of getting rewarded for your thought process and having spent the time, et cetera? Like, I don't understand I don't how you're going to defeat a first mover's advantage ever. I, I don't know if this particular issue is to do with time invested. I think it's more so to do with there was a strategy people used it and then GGG removed it from the game essentially. Yeah. Right. So it's not people weren't like investing time or anything. It was just because they were playing more at that moment, they were able to do it. Wherein all these people who couldn't play then were like, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna do that. Like when I get home or when, you know, I finish work for the week and da da da. And GGG said, no, we're not gonna let it progress. We're nerfing it now. I think that's why people are primarily upset. Um but do you I think it would have caused more damage in the economy in the long run to leave it into the game at that amount and having that influx of materials? Is that sort of the gamble that they're kind of going with them, right? Right, yeah. The market would have been completely obliterated. Yeah. I, but the problem from that I see is that the, the market issue would have been completely obliterated no matter if they fixed it or not. But they would have not upset the new mm -hmm. casual players by not fixing yeah. it. I feel like, like Chris Wilson was talking about how important and uh, um, sensitive uh, the integrity of the economy actually really is because mm -hmm. you want to have that sense of progression, right? Because the importance of that is so paramount. It, I, think, I feel like it was just was weird that they now, for some reason, made the decision to do these heavy changes that directly impacts the market. Is that something they've been very careful with doing? They, they've they done that consistently. Even when they introduced new tiers of modifiers, they were very clear with the tele with the with um, when they told the community about this, that that happened in a league switch where we got new tier one modifiers that was higher than yep. the previous tier ones, right? They didn't do that mid-league because that would have a heavy impact on the market. But they already made several decisions over the past 10 years as designed to not impact the market. They need to leave that alone. They're very careful with that, but not this league. They completely just flip 180 on this. So it's it's obviously an outlier because yeah, I've been playing since Blight and this has never happened before to this magnitude, I don't think. Like it changed this drastic, uh, like two mechanics in a game, in the game before. Could it be connected to the change in leadership at GGG? It does seem like, you know, it, I think Mark officially is like the Path of Exile one guy. Maybe he has a different viewpoint on it. And maybe this is the chance because obviously something has swapped up. Like the marketing for the whole GGG Live thing. So freaking professional. Like everything's polished. They're going all in on changing, I think, the direction in which they're advertising their two games. Maybe mm. they're also changing the way in which they want to address stuff. Like Last Epoch, I didn't play a ton of it, but I know they also went 
through this sort of thing where there was some abused game mechanics and a lot of people wanted them to nerf it mid-cycle and they were like, oh, well, now's our time to define whether or not we're going to do that. Maybe GGG is finally shifting. I, I, I'm not sure. I would love a manifesto. I, Manifestos are cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Last Depot is a little bit different as well because they were in a position where they had a horrific launch. Let's just put it that like That's just what happened. The, the launch was terrible. And... Then they had they they had so much things happening that when they finally had the opportunity to fix this bug, which you know it's it doesn't matter they fixed the bug right, it's already gone so long time from when it was found out to when they can finally fix it that a lot of people had already started playing it and people were going right. towards playing it. Right. So now they risked the, the situation of hey we might we might now screw over a lot of people's uh, expectations what they want to play if we fix it now because it took so long time. Uh, in a perfect world, the, the, a bug should always be fixed as soon as possible. But now there was such a big time gap. So mm -hmm. they did the PR move of saying, we're going to ask the community, mm -hmm. do you want us to fix this bug now or later? They didn't say because it took us so long, but that's essentially what they did, right? So they took yeah. a politically correct way, approach to it to be as, as PR safe as possible with their decision making. I think that was smart from their their part. Even if I don't personally agree with it, I do think that was the best the course of action for them. The community majority of the community said, "Fix it now." They fixed it. They moved on, and I believe that's how they're going to uh, move on in the future. But that's very different from the PUE situation, right? Yeah, because in PUE, I mean, the strategy emerged like. 12 hours before the fix, I think, something like that, was when it was showcased by, like, Fubgun and Grimrow. It was very mm. quick. Obviously, people were doing it in private before, I'm sure. The true 1% or the 0.1%, the people who aren't streaming or sharing content, but they were just blasting all the time. So, yeah, yeah it's... I don't, I don't know what the right answer is. It's a, it's obviously a very controversial topic, and people are heated on it, but... I've never is. seen a game that has a live economy that did well if they just left like exploits this. in the game that that didn't get fixed like it just any game that i've ever played like if there's a problem you gotta fix it right like I, yeah. if, if we all agree that okay it's it's like a problem like there's too much coming into the economy don't they have to fix it and just eat the eat the complaints i mean how are you gonna not it's either people are gonna be pissed off the economy's ruined like a week into the fucking thing or something or but that's the thing it wasn't a bug the initial part was not a bug. They it just came fucked out up. as this was intended. They fucked up on the balancing of it. It was just too much. It was not a bug. Then they nerfed it. It wasn't like we are exploiting this, which we've had in the past. Now, we are focusing a lot on the economical impact. Do you think... They didn't say this in the patch notes, but we've all seen the gameplay. Was this a stress on the servers? What if not 10 people were doing it, but it got to the weekend and it's showcased to everyone and now it's 50 people, 100, 1,000 people. Those maps were ridiculous. I mean, he was T-posing and everything and just going 25,000 monsters point. on the map. Like yeah. maybe, but I feel like they're so good about being transparent and that's why I love them. I, I would love that sort of note. Like, you know, hey, we, fit, we changed this because of this. If it was because I mean, of the economy, say that. If it's because it's going to break all the servers and destroy the league, that's the reason, too. Because I, it was ridiculous, guys. That's like 10x the number of monsters that have ever been in a map before. Yeah, that's crazy. That's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. I mean, I saw people dying in hardcore from the yeah, bosses that, not doing bended. their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Bandit. I saw King Conger died as well. And he came to my stream. It's like, what, what did I die to? I looked at it. It's like, that's a bug. Like, there's no way you would have died there. And then, like, a half an hour later, I had a boss having voice lines, but the ability didn't sync to the voice line. I was like, what the hell's going on? I didn't know how to move. And then suddenly, it was like a shaper slab happening when he yeah. was doing a beam. I was like, what the shit? So, yeah, no, server seems to definitely have t taken a, a hit from it. But as like you said, they've always been transparent. So, I mean, if that was the reason, yeah. you could have said that, Seriously. toned it down, and... I would have, I think that would have taken away a lot of the heat because then they would have had an actual reason, not a bug or glitch, but a problem, a, yeah. like a game server stability issue. Did they that was state because... it was a bug? Because you, you originally called it a bug when you were talking about it. So I thought, 
it is a bug because it's obviously I'm not doing whatever the fuck this is. I'm playing solo self on hardcore, so I didn't get you do all this juicing. But did they actually refer to it as a bug, or what was their stance on it? Did they actually no, say this they, is an exploit, it's a bug, this is just something we don't want to intend? Nothing. Like, what is they, so what happened was the, the strategy essentially is there's the all flames. You could change one of the packs to be a bunch of rogue exiles, and then you could roll a map on a T17 uh, map or a mod on a T17 map that causes all unique monsters to be possessed. And then what was the last thing? I feel like, and then you could put Beyond on the map too. And with a Scarab that causes every unique monster killed to spawn like 10 Beyond portals or something. Mm -hmm. And because they introduced that patch with the Anarchy, the Rogue Exiles, and with the ability to reroll T17 maps, you could guarantee uh, the possessed monsters, you could put Beyond on the map, and you could get all the Rogue Exiles, and it was just causing an absolute crazy amount of monsters. So they changed the uh, All Flame to now only put in one Rogue Exile per pack, and they removed that modifier for Tormented Spirits. They didn't say it was a bug or anything, they just changed the stuff. Mm. So that's how they addressed it. Which yeah. and they didn't say a was, word about it. They just they just did it. It was in the patch notes, like the changes. But no, no, so, like a dev explanation of. No, no dev explanation. Okay. It was obviously addressing that because it. I mean, I, I think yeah. that now that I'm thinking about it more, like if a few people were doing it, and by the weekend okay. there's thousands. I get of the drama now. It. Then I was like thinking, it's like, well, because yeah. we keep talking about it, like it's an exploiter bug. I'm like if it's an un un unintended bug, like it makes sense. But if there's no addressing of it at all. Like, I could see why people could get yeah. pretty salty about that then. Okay. Yeah. And then there's me, you know, just putting in random scarabs into my map device. Yeah, chilling. that's where I'm at. It's it like, oh, I'm fun. trying to get my T16s down. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm trying to stay alive, trying not to die to innocence for like the 12th time, but, you know, it's all good. <laughs> you know, you? Uh, the, um, uh, I was doing that as well. I just checked in some hard being scared. Then one guy in the chat was like, Yo, you got like 50 divines of scarabs in there. I'm like, what? No <laughs> yes. way. Look at it. So I had like a bunch of these div car scarabs. I sold two of them for like 40 divs or something. It was like, oh what the God. shit? The 48 divs I think I got for them. It was insane. It's like, what the hell? I'm sending a welfare. That same thing oh, happened no. to me. Someone sent me this website, like Wealthy Exile or something. So like I log into this uh, thing and it's like, you have nine divines. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, I have like four chaos. I'm like, they're like, what the hell are these now. scarabs, dude? Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Oh, and I look in, of course, all the ones I was just like putting into my tier four. It's like, oh, let me chisel this thing, put a blue, put like three scarabs in. They're all worth like, you know, basically more than my entire stash combined. So I'm like, ah, oh, I'm a fucking idiot. Nice. That's great. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, That's we're trading things. And how yeah. things fly, like the the shift of it as well, like the all flames after the the changes kicked in, <laughs> just fucking crashed to the ground. It reminds yeah. me of uh, last league. I uh, decided to do a little bit of juicy last league, so I invested a modest six hundred divines on just maps, and I rolled them up modest and prepped them. Had all six hundred divines. Six hundred divines, man. What? I had a couple of quad tabs filled with these, and then I did it for like three hours. And I just left those tabs in. It just sat there. And a lot of people do that. Like, so this league, a lot of people invested hundreds of divines on prepping all the all flame. They bought them in bulk so they don't yeah. have to trade all the time. Like, that's like, it sounds crazy when I say modest 600. Like, yeah, that's it not uncommon. Pretty crazy. It's not uncommon. It is a, it is a very common thing where you just buy the stuff in bulk. You prep the stuff, so you have things to farm for the entire day. And like people like myself would, would set those things up, so we we uh, have things to do for several days, not requiring us to trade. Imagine the people that did that, and then the patch kicked in. <laughs> you just spent all of that, and it's worthless Man. now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I dropped one of those all flames right after the patch hit, and I was like, gosh dang, I checked the market. They dropped from like two divines to 20C like that. It was yep. insane. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh, man. No, but like, it's it sounds crazy, but a, a lot of people, especially when it comes to currency and markets, a lot of people have very loud um, opinions on how things work. And, but in reality, they have no clue how it works. I mean, just look at crafting, for example. And, and a prime example of what I do is if I have a lot of currency, I will buy the first thing I will do is buy between 20 and 40,000 chaos orbs. That's the first thing I do. 
because I will use those chaos orbs to craft with. That's the first thing I do. Just saying that, people are like, why? What? That's a lot of chaos orbs. I don't have to buy chaos for at least 24 hours if I do that. Then I have to Boy, buy more. Dude, your numbers are like NASA numbers. You're just like, ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, just the, just 20,000 chaos. That will get me through the day. These are, this is like a crackhead. Like, I, I, I got like three pounds of crack. That will get me to the end of the day. Like, what the fuck are we talking but, about? I mean, it's like... like but that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people then have a lot of uh, uh, opinions and they, they make statements and then they have no idea of how it actually is done on certain aspects. I don't know exactly the depth of when it comes to like super juicing the maps and how they do it. I know I did it lastly. When it comes to like uh, profit crafting, that's another thing. And then you have this idea where people say, oh, the most profitable thing you can do in the game is party MF. Look at MP. That's absolutely crazy. And then when you look at reality, they're making a lot of currency, but they also have a team that they split it with, and the currency they make per person for their time invested is still lower than what you do with flipping or profit crafting. Uh, well, uh, excluding last league. Um, and with, with pre patch this league, I guess. Um, you say it's not that <laughs> uncommon, but the, the, the amount of people that like Funny. have a currency team has got to be <laughs> like a dozen like how many people are no, actually no, no. on this planet doing this shit like surely no, people no. are just logging in and playing the goddamn game like what is this eve online like this sounds like a spreadsheet simulator i don't have a team this league uh like i normally do normally i have three or four people in together that i play with we we, we don't actually play together we just craft together and make sure all, all our items are always up for sale 24 7. This league, I'm, I don't. I only have two sellers. So what I do when I am when I log out, all of my items get shipped off to another person who nowadays have to make a separate account to sell the items from that account because people are tracking the items that me and the other guys are crafting and selling and they're copying that. So we have to make a separate account so that they can track the items. And those items are crafted. What will always have to be done off stream, otherwise the market gets ruined. And that's basically how that's done. And it's a shit show to make that work as a content creator. But imagine the people that are doing this that are not streaming. We're talking two, three, maybe four mirrors a day in a value of items. It's it's insane how much you can make doing that. And but people why? don't really So like the point it. I don't get is like why? Like what whether the builds aren't that expensive. What are you gonna spend five billion mirrors on? Like I don't what the fuck are you even doing with the currency? What are you doing with forty thousand chaos orbs? Like well, obviously there's a whole nother <laughs> game here I don't even understand. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, the, the problem with it is that it all depends on what you're doing. So, for example, this league, I'm not pushing currency. I don't have any goals to use that money for. So, I'm not doing it this league at all. I have two sellers. I let them sell the items and that's it. That, and then I get the currency from it and they take 10% cut from it. And that's perfectly fine. I still make money from it. The problem is that when you do have a goal when that requires a stupid amount of currency, we're talking mirror items like the, the corrupted helmet I made a few leagues back. That took me, what was it, 7,000 divines to finish or oh, something Jesus. like that. Oh, Jesus. That was just one item for 7,000 divines. That's just absolutely nuts. So that's the kind of stuff you do with that that amount of wealth. And, I mean, I, it kind of depends. Like, I'm not pushing this league. I'm fine. But in previous leagues, when I do it, that's different. But the, the point being that a lot of people don't understand how it really what, what's really going on with, with the people that are doing these things. And that's, yep. that's what I kind of like the point I wanted to bring up. Obviously, I don't. I mean, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> preach. I have no idea what we're talking about yet. Uh, I'm just saying, like, there's a big gap in terms of knowledge between these things. and But the people who don't know, they're more than happy to have very loud arguments and opinions about how things are working when they have literally no clue. So here's a question Same for you. With, is whose opinion matters more? The dude who's like farming 85 billion beers and controlling the entire economy or the guy who's like trying to play the game? Who buys the supporter packs, Dio? Come on. Aha! I, right I, to the I, core I've, of the always, I've always said that the game should always cater to the casual player base because the one percenters doesn't exist without the nine, 99%. True. So then does it matter if that person who's loud and argumentative actually understands what's going on behind the scenes if they're not the problem? Like if the dude who's like playing the game and has a point, is his is his opinion actually weighted more than as opposed to the guy who's min-maxing? I think it's like the DGG staff are very, very smart individuals. That's why we don't see them making changes. Well, arguably, we should take this current recent changes aside for other reasons. We, they've never made changes that is heavily impacting the, those kind of approaches whatsoever. 
flipping or profit crafting, all those things like in the group play to some degree, I guess, but it has more to do with server stuff, right? The, the discussion that is happening on Reddit or on streams, oh, you're disconnected from the player base and whatnot. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Like, it's just because I play the game differently doesn't mean that I don't, don't see the other side of the shoe, right? Or the coin. It, it has a lot to do with those things. It, the, the argumental part about it is that it's impossible to have a discussion about these high-end currency things, which is the topic right now that people are talking about. But when these discussions are emerging, people are, throw out wild statements that yeah, is completely true. inaccurate. Mm -hmm. like, I think it's important that when one is having a discussion or argument about something, that the arguments presented needs to be factual. Because as soon as someone says something that someone else is reading, that other person who read it will now potentially treat that as factual context, and on and on it goes, and now it's just a shit show. There's nothing that's actually... Uh, nothing you can touch on and say this is a this is this or this is that. Yeah, it's a good Not, point. Not I think it's this. Like that's that's where I was getting at, and um, I, I think that's kind of crazy. Uh, generally, when it comes to these things, so, like I said, I mean, yeah, the, the current the numbers that I, that I mentioned, that like that's how I play when I'm pushing currency, absolutely, and that's. That's not uncommon. It's kind of on the midsection, sometimes more, sometimes less. And it's crazy numbers, absolutely. And then you have a situation in the past. We have uh, Janebu Varga, the owner of the TFT Discord. He got false positive ban, and everyone's like, RMT, RMT. <laughs> I guarantee you that if he RMT, he would be banned. Like, I don't know about the situation there. I've, I don't want to say too much, but I feel like if people are RMT, they get banned. I have mm -hmm. played together with an Aura bot many years ago. I haven't played with him in a very, very long time. He got banned for being an Aura bot player for another party he normally didn't play with. And that party was RMTing and not him. And he got banned for participating for two days with him. So if, they, if people RMT, they get banned. Trust me. If a streamer would RMT, they'd get shit on so fast. So there's like those wild accusations and whatnot comes throwing around as soon as you talk about these numbers because they're unfathomable for a lot of people that don't understand the the concept behind it but it does require 24 7 work from a collective of people it's like i couldn't do it myself for example mm -hmm. yeah i don't even know what to say i've got like 15 chaos orbs in my bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah i have 14 i'm like we're worlds <laughs> apart oh but you're you playing hardcore true yeah, yeah i'm playing softcore trade man <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> But I am getting a lot of POE currency ads on Google now. I wonder if it like knows that this league I'm like super poor or something. It's calling <laughs> you something out, going. talkative. <laughs> like, hey, get your get your uh, bread man. up, scrub. You know you want that know. headhunter. It's it's bad. Yeah, I, I'll get a headhunter after I get my replica Alberons. We'll we'll see. But it so. didn't headhunter go up now again though. It's like I think it's like set fifty or something. It was at 25. Yeah, I saw it down like 25. Yeah. Yeah. It was <laughs> crazy. crazy. I can't even believe it. Yeah. So Mage Bloods, oh, too, were like 60 or 65, something like that. It's crazy stuff. I don't know how low they dropped. I, I know I saw them around 100. That's when I picked it up. And then, oh, yeah. Um, uh, but, and, and then they doubled to 200, 200 the next day. Yeah. The 190 I sold mine for. Mm. The, uh, the only smiled. time I ever got to play with a headhunter is I was doing Uber Cortex. And I got the modifier that let me yeah. steal the dude's affixes. And I was like, holy shit, no wonder people like Headhunter. Like, it was the oh, funnest yeah. thing I had experienced the entire game. I was just, like, blasting through. I was like, I want this map to never end. Just give me the fake Headhunter affix, please. It, you, you like Shaper, boss. Yeah. So people love Mage Blood. It's going for 190, 200 divs right now. Uber Shaper drops a belt. That is that has a random set of modifiers you can roll that includes giving you flask charges for utility flask or life flask. That applies to unique flask, making it in some cases a almost as good, if not better, than mage belt flask uh, belts for a fraction of the cost. It's crazy that people aren't using it. Like it's absolutely insane that it's that cheap, like a handful of divs or something compared to the 200 mage blood. Because that applies to unique flask and gives them like I think it's twenty percent increased flask effect, and the mage blood strategy is to um, 
is basically to have the the uh, it's in the stealing orb between kindling to give you 70 percent increased effect and so you lose 50 yeah. percent increased effect but now the belt would apply to your unique flush so you basically have the pathfinder ascendancy on your belt and it costs a handful of divines instead of 200 and it applies to your yeah. unique. So, you can have so i'm gonna go to total faith gonna go to poe ninja and i'm gonna watch the graph go up for whatever the belt <laughs> is called i know what you're doing i know you dropped a few or something you know Yesterday. No, I haven't even done it yet. I just saw it. I thought it was crazy because it's like, why isn't it more? But apparently, I'm assuming it's being farmed a lot. Mm -hmm. And people are going for mage bloods when they could go for, I believe. Yeah, thank you, chat. Uh, the belt is called Tides of Time. Tides <laughs> of it's Time. The quote. <laughs> it's an amazing belt. Quote. So if you get one, try it out. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> And you can buy one, ladies and gentlemen, right now from Gazi TV. Just contact him in the link down below. I actually don't even know what Mage Blood does. I don't, I don't have does. one, actually. <laughs> People are always talking about Mage Blood, but I am assuming from context clues that it just makes your potions run all the time, basically. Or like, what the fuck does Mage Blood do? Four of them. Do? Four of them? Which one's four? Four? It makes four of them like permanently apply their effects to you. Mm. Okay, so that's the point. Two to four, know. right? Is that you can roll, you can divine it to be four. I've never actually used a Mage Blood either. Yeah, I, I've I never had one. any of this shit. I think the most expensive item I had was a lightning coil. I'm not really sure. Maybe a pledge of hands. Like, these items are not very good. I think my entire softcore trade build that did the Ubers last season was, like, two divines. Oh, yeah, that was insane. I wanted to you play know, that version of Ark. I don't think I'll get to. Thank God. You know, DM, after uh, you and I played uh, the three firemen... You, me, and Pox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. I had so much fun uh, doing that. So actually, after that, I have uh, not equipped a mage blood on a character ever since. I uh, stop at high budget. I don't push like mirror tier several hundred divs. Like I stop my max budget. I put on my character's high budget ish, and then I go to the next character. And I I'm having a blast doing that. So the mage blood I bought, I haven't even used it. It just got sold. And I don't know, I just feel like equipping a mage blood, you feel so powerful. And half an hour later, you're so bored because nothing can touch you. I just, I need to feel once in my life. I don't know if I need to go be a soft core Andy for a minute or something, but like, I need, I need to actually feel what it feels like to be strong in this goddamn game. Because I'm so sick of walking up and like dying again to like Exarch mm -hmm. or Shape. Like here I am, hardcore solo self found. 48 hours later, all right, let's run it back, boys, and then getting instantly shit on again by the beam like every goddamn time I get killed by these bosses. I, I, eventually, I'm going to get the Void Stones, dude, but it's I've been getting shit on over and over and over again by the bosses, so at some point, I'm just going to give up on life and go tr uh, do softcore one more time, but for now, I'm, I'm still trying. I'm still desperately trying to beat the hardcore. No. Did you die earlier today? I was watching at like three o'clock and you were yeah, alive. Of course, yeah, I die every. You died day right on before the pod. Oh my yeah, god! So me and oh. me and uh, it's Pox's fault first of all because me really? and Pox were playing together and he jinxed us and he says I've never died to innocence ever. I'll have you know. And I was playing righteous fire, which should not be dying to fucking innocence. But he was like, innocence is so rippy. So we go in there, and I put the portal down so he can go back to base because he's out of portals. He comes out of the portal and gets insta shot. Like, it just, he gets slammed, like, <laughs> it just kills him right out of the portal. And so then <laughs> I was so distracted by Pox, I'm just going to blame on him again, that I got shotgunned by about 15 different of those innocence balls all of a sudden oh, and immediately yeah. died. So I'm just going to blame it on him. Petrified. So you can hide behind the statue when the bull as hell starts. Yeah, well, that's a skill issue. I guys. just learned that yesterday. That's crazy. Oh. It's funny, though, because the boss is actually very easy to dodge and everything, and it's one of the easiest bosses in reality, realistically. It's also the one boss I have died to the most. It should oh. be one of the easiest, because everything is where, rather well telegraphed, and it's yet one of the bosses I've died to the most. Even when I played hardcore and the, even the gauntlets and everything, it's the one boss I managed to die to the most. I don't know yeah. what's up with it. Katava Act 5 it. for me. I, I've lost two mm. this league alone to Katava Act 5, the stupid, like, boop, 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 like the most oh. telegraphed move in the history of this game. It's like four corners coming together and just, ba -doo! it's got yeah, me twice and now. If you, if you move away the, uh, and you cross one of them, you take the damage as well. That's the scary I didn't part know that. Well. I didn't know that, actually. Uh, so you want to, like, make sure you move out where it's not bouncing in. 
How do you like not even the... that is more rippy than innocence? Yet I have died the most to innocence, which should not be possible. So like, every time someone tells me they died to it, I'm like, I know, man, I know the feeling. <laughs> like, Solaris and Lunaris, <laughs> I die every league to them. I I think they're the really? rippiest. Yeah, oh, it's, the, it's the, the the cross beam ability. Yeah, from the X Solaris. thing. Yeah, that thing it fucking slaps me every time. Dude. No, that one I slaps have, like Max Fire Res, and I just die. Just stand behind her. No, he's right. There's something about the like the X move does actually slap, dude. They would take me down like eighty percent down in one hit. Yep, yep. Just stand behind her. Okay, maybe I'll do that. Somebody well, told you, me you to do that. You were both playing melee, Bills. I'm the one playing the range, and I'm I'm right. I'm literally giving her a colonoscopy, and it's fine. No, I don't stand behind anything. I stand in front, and I face tank, and I go, and I just hit him with the axe. <laughs> I'm both hitting myself and them, and and mm -hmm. somehow I get shocked that I die every time. <laughs> oh man that's the way okay yeah i've learned now i have to start fresh again with another what are you gonna go are you uh, gonna run it back with righteous fire I or i don't even fucking know talk i'm so sick of dying i gotta there's gotta be a boat out there that can limp me through all the way of the void stones without i thought rf was going to be that but somehow i managed to die with that too so i'm Holy sure relic Holy Relic, is that a minion build? It's the one I'm playing now, and yes, it is. I can't do the minions. I my problem with the minions it uses is they fire feel, guy though. They feel too good. Like the minions are like they feel too good. I was playing the minions and I was getting mad because I was like, it's it just I feel like everything dies and I'm I'm just existing in a world of the minions. Like I I I need I, I don't know. It was too good. It was I couldn't do it. So I rage quit minions and never went back because I was following your guide. I'm like, this is, it's literally too good. Like I, I could, I could do it. I need well, more. Now I can't go play. Now I have to take the compliment. Either. Thank you. It was very good. Like I might say it's actually really good. I was just like, I can't do this. Like, I don't feel like it. It's, it's insanely good. So I can, eh. how about you talking to you play minions? I played minions once and I followed one of your guides, Gazzy back in heist league. Bad league, I think, to choose minions. I, I did not enjoy myself. I think that's the league I've played least out of any league before. Sorry. But it's okay. It's okay. I was a big minion enjoyer in Diablo 2. Uh, but and then you played mine and you're no longer a minion enjoyer. No longer a minion enjoyer. No, I think it was the heist <laughs> league, though. I, I just wasn't a fan of the doors. Really? No one Back was. The league. Yeah. No one was or is. That's, I didn't get the heist portal at 36 challenges. Because I couldn't push myself to do it, and I regret it ever since. I love that portal; it's so dope. Yeah. Challenges. Those what are the about... crux vault thing, like where you go through and you get the rewards for like the pass. Yeah, I love those. It's yeah, it's one of my favorite things with Pee Wee getting the exclusive cosmetics and wearing them and showing off, even though nobody cares. I care. I like. I look at myself in my hideout. So, yeah. Big fan of that. I've been getting like 36 or 40 for quite a while now. It's fun. You and can, I got uh, try DD though. I have not tried DD. Because, I mean, they got buffed. <laughs> God knows why. Yeah, right? <laughs> the entire community is screaming for it to be nerfed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, play it now before it's too late. Because everybody knows what happens when they come with a bad hammer. Like, they don't just make it worse. They bury that shit six feet deep. <laughs> I really wanted to play Summon Reaper when it came out, and it was so trash. It upset me. Oh, I like that style it still of music. Is. It, I know it's still trash too. I'm hoping PUE2 introduces some different types of minion play styles so that, I, that I'll enjoy more. But they haven't said anything about that since they were ready, and then they pushed it off a little bit. So I guess they went kind of back to the drawing boards because the visual clarity was too poor and they don't want that and they seem very intent on solving it with minions and they're pretty confident that they are actually going to do it which is interesting because they is. still want to have 20 things on the screen at once yep don't know how they'll do that they'll think of a way yeah both my yep. builds got nerfed this league arca surgeon oh, yeah. is in the dirt and then bone shatter got yep. nerfed and those are like the only things yep. i do other play that's so crazy to me because like the way GGG handles nerfing is that it has to be played by an overwhelming amount of players. That means it's going to get nerfed. That's how they shake the meta. 
That's why Seismic Trap, which the entire world was screaming for it to be nerfed, never got nerfed. <laughs> it should have got buffed at once. Same thing happened with DD. Nerf it, nerf it, nerf it, but not enough people are playing it, so they buffed it. So I'm like, what, what is going on? And Dark Pack, for example, has been before the when the alt quality gems was there, was one of the craziest, highest damage dealing abilities you could play with almost no investment. It's absolutely disgusting. Not enough people playing it because of the playstyle. So they buffed it. <laughs> like, what the hell? And then the, the new gem, they, we were waiting for the trans gems, and now it's kind of so so. It's okay. But it's like, just, just because not enough people are playing it makes you able to play a build consistently. So there are like these non-content creators who have their own little niche corner and they're playing this super overpowered build that they've been playing for several years because it never gets nerfed because not enough people playing. It's not popular enough to get nerfed. So that's why I think like Bama is going to get nerfed. And I think that the Holy Relic, depending on the popularity now, it might be nerfed when it comes to the minion sections. But I just don't understand some of the melee stuffs. Are they really played by that many people to warrant getting nerfed? Because <laughs> I feel like they Melody nerfed is like the Cleave worst of rage. Yeah. They nerfed it going. I couldn't believe it. I love that build so much. I couldn't believe they nerfed it though. Cleave it was rage, insane. So cool. I lost one yeah. hardcore last. I was doing the hardcore solo so far last league too. And that was the one I was most sad about. I was like, it was a berserker like level 86 or something i was being an idiot i was oh, wow. doing the like the splinter toll or whatever you go in each so i was doing that thing and i just jumped way too far in and got like like just surrounded basically and got dicked yeah. down pretty hard but the build felt super fun and i was just starting to get where like the attack and the rage was ramping it's like man this is a super cool build it felt great and i didn't really it's cleaver rage though like i didn't Maybe it's it's uh, hitting stuff off screen i think was what people were saying and i think so they didn't yeah. they didn't like that but I thought that was a, a super a super cool build, man. That was one of the ones I had the most fun yep. on, actually. With with charms too, I think that really enabled the build as well. Yeah. Like uh, you could jump up to uh, max rage just with one charm slot. It was so cool. Mm. You didn't even need to allocate like the ascendancy passives for Warbringer or whatever. Oh, you could just weapon swap to Red Blade Banner, hit it, max rage, hop into your map. I it love the charms. I, I miss yeah, those. Like being able to calling strike or get suppression or whatever I needed. The charms were really nice. Yeah. yeah. And that's something too that we didn't really talk about. We went from a league wherein we had so much borrowed power, yeah. so many cool things to work with, to a league with literally none of that. Reverse power, bro. You got nerfed the campaign. Yeah. Like it's actually it's harder. Crazy. I the the warden felt like such a nice start for like me as a noob i'm like i get resistances with nothing in the helmet speed with nothing in the boots i'm just gonna take this because like i don't know what to do with all these sockets yet anyway i know whether i'm going but like i right now i don't want to like worry about so i just didn't have to worry about filling these sockets and then i get I, these bonus stats it just made the campaign like way more fun so i definitely yeah. missed the warden going through the campaign the rucksack though ah rucksack yeah that was wild i can't believe mm. they did that i it, wow. like, having trade, having my inventory be opened for big trades with a lot of items in it, and still not needing to move my damn corruption essence, my portal scrolls or wisdom scrolls, or my pre-rolled maps. It <laughs> just felt so good. And it, it was like, nah, we're not going to reintroduce it. I ah, mean, I fell into deep, dark depression. When I get introducing <laughs> crazy items like in Crucible, and like tattoos, stuff that alters your character, but something that changes the UI of the game and gives people like 25% more inventory space. That's, that's got to be a cooked up idea. I don't know how that got past the top level leadership at GGG. But. I mean, my understanding, didn't Mark and Jonathan say that? Like, he just did Chris it. Was like, they, they did it without asking Chris because Chris would have said no oh, or no, something what? like that. Did I miss that? Yeah, it was in one of the, yeah, the which podcast was that? It was in one of the interviews or podcasts or something. Oh my God. Ziggy D, what? I think, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. And they were they like, we're well, just going to do it. <laughs> Chris would just oh say no. <laughs> That's hilarious. And everybody loved it. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, tattoos are cool, though. I like it. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it just allows us to do so much with when it comes yeah. to uh, build diversity and design. And I think it's really cool. The Pirandus jewel from Disley is just insane. One jewel slot, and now you can just have modifiers like covering all of Kato's rest from one jewel. Yeah, that's the like, big one. Yeah. Yeah, it's just beautiful. So, um, I don't know. I like it, though. I mean, I don't, I don't like the market behavior uh, this league, and I'm not a big fan of um, um, 
the um, the crafting too much because I feel like it's too many steps for the what you get for it. Uh, but everything else in this league, I'm actually very happy to engage with. I enjoy it. The monsters don't feel too bad. Again, yeah. after the the initial launch fixes, which is something we always go through, we get a state of the league too hard. They have to bring it down. Yeah, any tips for months. tier 17 maps? I'm about to hop into my first. I might try it tonight. Um, roll it till you're confident you can handle okay. it. Okay. Nice. Uh, and it. never, never touch Union of Souls. If you do a Union of Souls, you have one job and one job only. Get into the map, spam the key you have for your portal as you're running towards your the boss room. Get in there, and if you die, go in, run again, because you now have placed portals on the way there. Okay. Uh, Union of Souls, what it does is uh, picture Soul Eater, right? Which makes it take less damage. Now, every rare on the map has this. It's map wide. You kill one rare, every other rare on the entire map now got juiced. You kill the next rare, every other rare on the map now got juiced. Rinse, repeat this process, so that last rare you're going to fight is going to be 10 times worse than the boss. Wild. So, okay. yeah, no. Uh, right. Most of the maps is just bum rushing the boss, so. All right, I'm going to try Citadel. I think I got like five abominations, but people are saying that boss is a little cancerous. So I'm going to yep. hold off, try Citadel, and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was kind of, I wanted to ask some like non POE related questions here for a moment. I was going to ask you how you're enjoying the YouTube grind because I've been talking about yeah. a, lot of, a bit the ARPGs, but you know, I've, I've been doing YouTube before I did the ARPGs, and I really like doing YouTube. And I know you kind of seem like you have some pretty positive energy about YouTube too, right? Like you're always kind of making videos, and it seems like you're enjoying that side of it. So how have you been enjoying your time on the YouTube progression? Yeah, so before YouTube, I used to write a lot, uh, mainly like Dungeons & Dragons articles. I had my own site. Um, but when I had my first daughter, I stopped playing D&D because &D I couldn't get like six people in a room for four hours anymore yeah. and dungeon master and everything and play consistently uh but i still wanted a creative outlet because my job doesn't leave a lot of room for creativity so i said okay well you know in the middle of the night i can sit down script a video about something that i enjoy and i enjoy poe so i started writing scripts on that really enjoyed it Popped off on one video, thanks to Pee Wee Two and some Asmongold help, and <laughs> I decided I'm just I'm not gonna just let the rate wave just die down or anything. I'm gonna pump out content, see if people really enjoy it, and it worked out really well. Uh, I kept up stuff weekly and kept it positive, and that was a time it was right around Lake of Calandra, Gazzy. So there was like severe negativity in the Pee Wee scene, and I was like, all right. I'm gonna try to do some positive stuff. Let's see what's let's see what I can do. And that's the attitude I, I took with all of my content and people really liked it. And I've really liked it too. I've been trying non-scripted videos recently and those are going decently. Um, and it's, it's just really fun. Uh, the community that I've garnered is pretty positive. I was surprised at how few negative comments there are in YouTube. Like on U YouTube seems so much more positive than Twitter or Reddit or any other community I've been a part of. I, I think that's, you I guys think see that's that? fairly true. I think that's mostly true. Yeah, um, it's better than Reddit for sure, but I, I, I don't know, man. I was about to know? ask you, D, if you feel the same, but it does, It feels like you do. Well, I don't I, know. well okay, so I, I would say that you definitely get negative YouTube comments. It depends upon what you focus yeah. more. Like in terms of a quantitative amount, like right. for sure you get more positive than negative. I mean, this is like right. for sure, because you can look, you can literally look at like like ratio. Like if you get 90% of like ratio on video, you're like, holy shit, like this, this is a terrible like ratio. What the fuck happened, right? Like it's only got 90%. But you think about it, that's nine to one, you know, but like on right. Reddit or something, it's, it's going to be completely opposite. So I think it's one, it's the environment. Like people are going to YouTube to be entertained, et cetera. They're not, they're clicking on something that just draw, draws their interest. They're not necessarily yeah. looking for something because they want to see someone else complain about the same thing. Like if I go to Reddit, I'm going to be like, I wonder if other people feel like the same issue I have. Like that's the mentality of going to it. Whereas on YouTube, people are looking to be entertained. They're like, oh, that looks interesting. So they'll click on the video. Like they're not sure what they're going to watch before it shows up on YouTube most times. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like that's one of it. The other part is like my experience uh, was 
like almost an anomaly because I've been in YouTube long enough where I've definitely seen like the complaints and stuff and most of the negativity that I've seen in stuff normally has to be related to the game and the gaming company of whatever game I'm doing. But like very rarely are people negative about the person they're watching. Like I don't, yeah. I don't really get that many hate comments. Eventually, someone will call me a Blizzard chill, or you know, you're just a Poe oh, yeah, Andy. I get or, that. Yeah, you get that. You get yeah. that shit. Aren't for you sure. though? <laughs> what Poe Andy or Blizzard chill? Which one you want to call me out on here? Because I try to do the nuanced <laughs> take, which doesn't go exist. <laughs> sure, why not? You got me on both of those. But uh, you know, the reality of it is, is like I kind of had an anomaly where I feel like if you go back and look at the videos that I did at the start of the D four. Like all of the comments were just flooded with people being like super nice. Like, oh, I love this guy. Yeah. Like the comment, it's just, it was like weirdly yeah. positive. Like I've actually never yeah. seen that on YouTube. So I know what you're saying. Mm. And I think a lot of times when you're like growing and like coming up, people like to be like, let's go, you know, like you're doing great, like keep going. You know what I mean? And at some point I think you get like too big or too many views or whatever. And then people like now think you're a corporate entity as opposed to just uh, the person. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen that happen too as well, where it's like, oh, he's got a shelf with stuff on it now. So he must be a different person. Like it's just, you know, that type of shit can happen too. But like 99% of the comments are very positive on YouTube for sure. It's not, yeah. it's not the same as other platforms. I've noticed that. I remember watching one of your videos, DM actually, you talked about, um, us content creators would very much prefer to almost always be in a position where we make positive, happy videos. Oh yeah. They tend to perform better and it's more fun for us to do as well. But if the topic at hand that needs to be addressed is negatively loaded, then so will the video. And that's, I mean, it's not like we're going to force ourselves to say positive things when the topic people are discussing is a negative one. Uh, as an example, and the, what you said in that video, you showed off a bunch of stuff, and it was a really good video for that matter. Uh, and it's like, I, I definitely see that as well. So, like, when it comes to content creation, like you said, talking, you saw there's so much negative stuff, people were already covering that. You're like, you know, I'm going to do my thing, I'm going to have some positive stuff in this. I think that's a really good thing to do uh, in general to, to foster that kind of community around yourself. This is like, after you, with many years of um, content creation, it, having a positive place to hang out in a community that you know it's just there to have a good time is so much yeah. more valuable than oh. one where it's just screaming and negativity 24 7. there's one thing about being honest and straight and having a proper discussion about something that might be a negatively loaded one doesn't matter but approaching it in a respectful way and having a positive tone i think does a lot a lot in that sense yeah that I, i'm totally on board with that too like I recently had my most negative video ever uh, in terms of comments. And that was actually my interview with Jonathan Rogers uh, because of the way that I conducted said interview. Uh, a lot of people hated the way that I, one, I had the audio set up and two, how I was constantly saying, yeah, okay, I understand that while he was talking. But people weren't necessarily mean. They were, everybody was constructive. Like the community that I built up, they were just like, Hey man, love the interview. Great stuff. Good questions. But we have some advice here. And I just really appreciated that because it, man, if I came off work and I spent time with my family and then I came on the computer at like 11 o'clock at night and I went to read the comments and make a video, if I was constantly swarmed by negativity, I'd probably bounce so freaking fast, but I'm almost up on a year now. It's going to be like a year in May of doing it. And that is not what I get at all. Like everybody's just so nice, so chill. And that doesn't even just go for people watching the videos and talking in the community, talking with you guys too. Like everybody's so freaking welcoming. Like I had made two videos and I think Grimro commented on one of them and was like, hey man, what's up? You're doing so well. Good, good job. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's just, it's awesome. I, I just really appreciate the PeeWee community and, and the content creators in general. It's just, uh, it's been a good ride so far. I, I'm happy I get to continue doing it. So <laughs> POE community is because uh, I feel like we're both new into the POE content creation. Yeah. You're not new into the game, but you yeah. know, I'm I'm also new both into the game as well as POE content creation or Twitch streaming or whatever. But the going into it, everyone was super welcome. I mean, people were raiding all the time and like giving me advice and trying to help out and whatnot. And um, I I've had the same experience of the POE community. It seems like surprisingly. Like, yeah, come join the party. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of energy where, where people are yep. just 
people are pretty nice about you know i like the we both we all went to the exile event right the, the poe2 event like everyone there was great right mm. like everyone that was, was unreal great. honestly like i've been watching awesome. all these people for like five years all you guys and then i'm <laughs> meeting everyone it was crazy I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I got to meet DM as well. I mean, normally in this industry, you start working with someone, it's like years before, for some magical reason, you happen to be at the same event together. It's like, took uh, took less than a year. Like, yo, let's go to LA. <laughs> like, okay, shut up, what's up? <laughs> That's crazy. I love that. But I, I mean, PUE has always been uh, very community-driven 10 years ago. Um <laughs> So if someone did something good for the community, that person would be highlighted by everyone. It was crazy. It's a little different nowadays, but it's still there. The problem with the community, people say, say it's toxic or negative and whatnot, has more to do with Reddit more so than content creation. Most content mm -hmm. creators are very welcoming. And it's always been like, yo, you do something good, you're going to get highlighted. It's like, yo, check out this cool thing here and there. Like it, It's always going to be like that. More people coming in. We all want to share the passion we have for this game. So I, I just love it. And I feel like the majority of the content creators that we have in the community right now have that uh, mindset to it. So I'm just happy to hear that that's still the thing. Very wholesome. <laughs> I mean, being in here for 10 years, I mean, it, you don't really see it too much. So when you have you guys that are more fresh or newer than myself and saying these things feels like that. Yeah, you can still do it. <laughs> it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> uh. What's well, oh, good to hear? Man. So we talked about Necropolis. We talked about Path of Exile 2, a little bit of D4. And we're getting about, just about over two hours here. So before we wrap it up, was there any other ARPG topics you guys wanted to cover? I was thinking about trying out like Grimdom recently. I don't know if you guys have had any experience with Grimdom. Talking, have you played that game at all? I've played it for about 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, I bought it. Really? I bought all the expansions while my wife was up north with our daughter for a few days, and I, I bounced. I was going. I was going between all these different ARPGs. I tried Grim Dawn, Torchlight. Uh, oh, there was another one. What's the Undecember? I think. Oh, yeah, I tried. I tried that a one bunch year. in one night. I was just like, you know, it was the end of the Poe League, so I thought I'm just going to try out all these different ones and see if anybody, any of them, feel really good. And Torchlight felt the best. I don't know if you guys have tried Torchlight in. Yeah, Internet. dude. It's crazy. Dude, it actually feels really good. I'm not gonna lie. It's a yeah. it's a mobile game, but oh yeah. my god, I I was like, oh, sh this is a good game. I don't know what is up with that game, dude. I'm completely with you. It it, it, it just feels fun to play. Yeah, yeah. Infinite, it's right? So that that you. one, they have a new season, I believe, launching the 18th, which is the same yeah. time as No, no rest, rest for, for the, the wicked. wicked. So yeah, there's gonna be a decision to make on that day. I think I'm gonna be playing No Rest for the Wicked because that one seems Me too. different. I'll try it out. Yeah, very. Good I gotta, I gotta play some more Elden Ring to prepare. Though I, I streamed yeah. my first time playing Elden Ring ever. People absolutely loved it. I could not get past like the tutorial boss for an hour and a half. It was pretty funny. Uh, tutorial yeah. boss? You mean the do on the horse? It's uh no, I, I killed him. Uh, there was a guy before, like a beast man in a cave with wolves. I don't know. He's apparently a regular mob at the end of the game. Oh, okay. And I was just slamming my head against the wall. And then somebody in chat said, think of it like a turn-based game. Bam. Next ah, pull, that's a good point. Him. It was a very good point. So, Because I was constantly going in and being really action-oriented. Every mm -hmm. single time I thought I had an opportunity. But then somebody was just like, God, just read his attacks. It's your turn, then it's his turn. Changed the game for me. And then yeah. the Wee League came out, so I didn't get to play any more Elden Ring. But that's how Wee but... Two will be played, by the way. <laughs> you're gonna have to fight your know. openings. So you're gonna die. <laughs> you mean you know? <laughs> yeah. He's bum rushing in with a two-handed axe. He's not gonna do shit. <laughs> yeah, but I definitely uh, want to no. try No Rest for the Wicked. Yeah, that looks very cool. Yeah, but that one looked very different than the other ones. Oh, yeah. I mean, people are calling it like. Uh, like an ARPG and stuff, it's like, maybe? Like, a, you know, I guess technically, yes, but people are comparing it to like, oh, it's, it'll be like D4 and Path of Exile. It's like, I, I don't I don't think so. Like, it doesn't feel like that. The item didn't look that. that way. Yeah, it didn't feel that way at all. It felt very much like you're saying, like an Elden Rings type game. It's definitely more Dark Souls than it is PoE. I like the painterly mm. style, though. I don't know if that's the right way to call it. Like, sure, the yeah. aesthetic, though. Yeah, I it mean, that makes sense. Cool. And the verticality yeah. of the map. Like, you, there's a lot yeah, of, like, going yeah. up and down also. I feel kind of like a platformer. Yeah, yeah. yep. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be kind of a fun one. So that's coming up yeah. this month here in just, what, six days, I think that's coming out. So, so Right. 12th today. But back on Grim Dawn, I, mm -hmm. I didn't get a lot of exposure to it. People say that it's excellent. The combat's apparently bad, but the build craft in it is insane. So I'm going to constantly push out surprise expansions. I think that's what I've read about it. So. I was waiting it's for the cool. next one of those to give it a try. I hadn't, I hadn't played yeah. it yet. Well, you haven't but played it? No, it's one of those ones that people bring up all the time. You're like, you gotta try Grim Dawn. You gotta try Grim Dawn. Like, so it's yeah. on the list for sure of things I should probably get to eventually. It has one coming out, I, right? Um, I played a lot of Grim Dawn. I, I min maxed a summoner build. Sorry, uh, but it was fun. I, I really enjoyed it. The only problem with Grim Dawn for me was the replayability or the longevity that was my issue with it um which makes me not play it more than after going through that problem. i'm not gonna min max again like i'll play through the story and whatnot it's such a fantastic game such a fantastic game the mini control is similar to how they do it in last epoch and it's one of those two, like last epoch and grim dawn are the two games that has the best minion ai control of all arpds available at the moment um, if you exclude automated stuff like you know the torchlight minions for example and I think that's absolutely amazing. But uh, it's a great game. You're going to love it. But uh, when was the expansion for that coming out? It's later this year? It's this year. It's like the Fangs of Astrakhan or something. Yeah. I don't know if it has a release date, but... You know what was It'll a probably be good. surprisingly good game was the Dwarven Realms. You got the indie one, like the $5 game. That, I tried that. I yeah, like everyone it. and their mom got sponsored to play me, myself included. But I wasn't sponsored. That one, dude, that one was actually like really fun. You know, sometimes you get these sponsor games, you're like, all right, let's see what it's like. You know, we'll never know. But I was like, oh, this one's actually like pretty fun. Like, it'll look pretty rough on the graphics, etc. It kind of looks like a PS1 game, but it's it's kind of fun. The grindy, the grindy part, but I think they just had a new season launch today, as a matter okay. of fact. That one wasn't so bad. For if I, I like it when a game is appropriately priced. Like, that's how I felt about Last Epoch. I'm like, this is a $35 game. Like, it's a good game. It's a good price. Yeah. You feel good about it. It isn't a $5 game. This is a $5 game. Like, it's one of those type of things where it's like, yeah, that's about right. See, I'm, I'm feeling that way. I, I'm getting a niche to play. I know this isn't an ARPG, but Helldivers 2, oh, shit, $40 yeah. game. It looks insane. I love the entire community aspect of how they're pushing the story and narrative forward. As someone who loves, like, D&D, &D, it sounds like D&D &D in space at an insane level of population like tens of thousands of players participating in this D, &D game i really want to try that out eventually i never actually got time to play it i would have no. loved to not because yeah. of the D, &D aspect but yeah. because i'm a i'm one of those cult fan fanatics loving the idea of starship troopers oh okay okay i gotta yeah. watch it i haven't watched that either that's really no that dude, that's a crazy good. Movie. I'm very young, so maybe I, it wasn't out. You know, it's all right. I, I had told people I hadn't seen Aliens, and so people flame me for not seeing Alien. So I, it either, man. It's what? okay. I watched it. No, look, I actually just watched it this week. I saw Alien for the first time. You know, the whole like Wah! the chest thing and all that. I watched that. that was, and... It's a good one. It's it's actually I was surprised how well the graphics held up, and it was like 79 or something that movie came out. Yeah, and it, it was like, damn, this is like well for it, it held up really well. For the day, for being what, it's like one of the best old? movies ever made. Yeah, like forty-five years ago. I mean, is is crazy how old that movie is, and it was very well done, held up for sure. Got to get into it. You can. Um, I'll watch it. Speaking of well done movies, Dune Two was rather recently released. Haven't seen that one yet. Books, oh. books were better. Read the books, everybody. Oh my Please. god! So I hear they're so good. Please. You know, I watched it the same night I landed in LA, but I landed really? and then, yeah, but I, it was, we had a late viewing, like 11 PM. I was sitting like this, trying to stay awake. <laughs> Were you and I like bumping me all the time. Dude, I was so tired, but uh, I, I hope I didn't feel like I'm going to watch it again to make sure I didn't miss anything. It was fantastic. I, holy shit. It was so good. Did you see it in IMAX, Gazzy? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's very good. Okay. And Crazy. no spoilers, but. Fallout's good too. If you haven't seen that show, you should watch. Fallout. I've heard that. We won't talk about. It. I won't say anything. Oh, so don't watch worry. Tonight. But you should watch That's, it. It's very good. I have Prime. My wife and I are going to watch the first episode. Very excited. You'll enjoy yes. that one. You have a you have a good night in front of you then, for awesome. sure. Very cool. I'm going to watch it tonight as well. Then. Okay. There you go. All right, and you can say in the chat how you feel about it afterwards because I'm curious. I know. Because I I very much enjoyed it. So.
Okay, Did they but, drop it the entire show or the first there's episode? There's eight episodes, the first season. Like, it's just fully out. Like, I dropped. love okay. it when shows do that. Like, it's just, yeah. here's the full show. Enjoy. Like, it's like, thank God. As opposed to, like, watching, you know, in, uh, Invincible. And then it's like, okay, here's half of the show. Now wait whenever, you know, maybe it's yeah. going to come. It's like, come on. Like, you got me on the hook I, I, here. I, I, I don't know. I actually really like when they release one episode every week because then you don't binge every all and have to wait a year for the next one. So then the gap between the season finale and the next season start was shorter. I like that because what I did with Game of Thrones was that every week on the freaking Tuesday, or I think it was, or whatever day, I think it was Tuesday, we actually had a group of friends who came over and you know, one, one guy was responsible for the wine, another one for the snacks and whatnot, and one guy for the food. And we just gathered up but two hours before the show, cooked the food, ate the food, and then put up the snacks. And as soon as the st show started, the intro kicks in, the song starts, everyone's just completely silent. I, I like and that, a glass too. Of wine. That is good. But the, the, in order to do that, you have to have enough episodes in a season that it's not like a month and it's over. You know what I mean? Like you have yeah, to be yeah, able to yeah. have, have enough of them where it's like you can get in the habit of it and feel pretty good. Uh, when, oh, yeah. And then you get into these like three-year gaps and you just forget about the show and you have to rewatch the all previous season as long as they have them close enough together yeah also Absolutely. the dragon will be like that that came out what was it last year and the next season comes out this year in the summer so that's gonna be good which show also yeah, the dragon one? oh the game, of the yeah, game of thrones prequel that one was actually oh. really good i thought it was gonna be crap but it was excellent I didn't watch it all the way through i watched a couple of them i think and then oh, you didn't like it oh wow. i don't know if i, I really didn't like it, it. i just I had like, it had been so long since Game of yeah. Thrones and then the way Game of Thrones ended, it's like, I kind of don't care anymore. So they just kind of burned me on it. You're the last so two depressing. seasons. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I was laughing my ass off. It was much like the Rings of Power. Uh, I don't know if either of you watched that, but I did watch as that, a yeah. huge, huge Tolkien fan, read the Silmarillion, all the new, the new book that just came out, Unfinished Tales. Wow. I was... Not happy with that. I it was really uh, funny. hated the first one, and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna treat this as a fantasy TV show, and then it was okay. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that. Yeah. It was it was better than it was manageable. But the reveal of Mordor made me literally fall off my couch when uh, the the they burn the place to the ground, and the orcs like. What should we call this place? And the guy just walks away slowly and the camera pans out to the map. And then more like a PowerPoint presentation of Mordor appears on the screen. It oh, oh, I couldn't. I won't rant yep. about it anymore. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. Uh well, we've been going two and a half hours. Uh, any last words? Anything you guys want to bring up? Any last conversations we didn't get to get in for this podcast before we wrap it up? And unfortunately, your boy has to go do his taxes. So I'm not oh, looking. Dude. I know. You've got three days, man. I, I I'm very aware, unfortunately. Uh, so mm. I am off to to the coal mines on that one. So okay. <laughs> Any last things you guys want to bring up here? I no. I just want to say thank you guys for having me on. No, really appreciate you. it. Love talking to you. It flew by, and I hope everybody has a great Necropolis League. Yeah, man. Thanks for appreciate coming. It. Thanks for coming by. You're you're a great guest. And let me do a shout out here. Go follow our boy. Talk of the tree. Put your YouTube in there. I got a shout out for the Twitch, but put your YouTube in the chat too. Go subscribe. Actually, I have it oh, right awesome. here. I got it right Thank here. Thank you. I'll, I'll copy paste it. Oh, well, so you guys are doing that. For those of you watching this on YouTube, we'll find a link to Talk of the Try and Darth Microsoft Actions channels in the descriptions down below as well. Don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button and leave a comment if you like the market changes and the crop is or not. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we yeah, are I'm talking. Out.